and you do wonder whether the French anthem La Marseillaise has ever been sung with more fervour it was deafening inside the Stade de France eight months on from the, the terror attacks it was particularly emotionally charged the singing of the anthem but of course everybody hopes this will be a most joyful occasion here this evening the teams have just had their photographs the marching band of the French Republican Guard and the Paris Fire Brigade is just leaving the field and the choir as well, the Choir School of Radio France are making their way off and the orchestra members are as well waving to the French supporters who are twirling their flags and the two captains Hugo Lloris and Cristiano Ronaldo are exchanging pennants over the halfway line it is a, a beautiful summer's evening here the logos that were raised up to the roof of the Stade de France are now being lowered back down the badge of Portugal the badge of France and the circular logo of Euro 2016 and indeed the huge image the inflatable Henri Dolonet trophy which was on the stage with David Guetta and Zara Larsson is now being wheeled off the pitch with its thick black electric cable which is being carried by seven or eight men dressed in black and the teams are ready Portugal with Rui Patricio, Cedric Suarez, Pepe, Font and Guerrero Cavalho, Adrian Silva, João Mario Renato Sanchez, Cristiano Ronaldo and Nani and France with Loris, Sanya, Koscielny and Umtiti and Evra Pogba, Matuidi, Sissoko, Griezmann, Payet and Giroud we welcome listeners to the BBC World Service who join us here in Paris too Mark Clattenburg, the referee, is waiting. This is the 15th European Championship final. It's the third to be held here in Paris, but it is the first to be staged here at the Stade de France. And the countdown to kickoff begins now. Mark Clattenburg, who's had an amazing 51 days refereeing the FA Cup final, the Champions League final, and now the European Championship final. Mark Clappenberg blows the whistle and after some delay Nani begins the match so Portugal in the, the wine red shirts and shorts green socks oh and a careless pass by Font across the back line almost presented the ball to Griezmann and he was fortunate there that it ran away from Griezmann out of play for a throw into France 15 yards inside the Portuguese half France blue shirts tonight blue shorts red socks Giroud heading up for Payet and it's hooked away out of play down the right hand side so this is five live and the world service from the bbc portugal against france in the final of euro 2016 and chris waddle and danny mills former england internationals both are with us for the commentary with payet losing possession and nanny taking it off him and clearing it left footed towards the halfway line so chris waddle we're underway yeah we thought old france would set up pogba sitting on the treaty Payet uh, sort of inside left Sissoko actually is the plane really a 4-4-2 Griezmann just off Juro but uh, the, again as we thought Portugal sat back playing on that counter attack Ronaldo and Nani split very wide apart and Payet running into trouble and now Ronaldo whistled by the French supporters and forcing an error actually by William Carvalho who passed it straight out of play so France potentially 90 minutes away from doing what they did the last time they hosted the European Championship and the last time they hosted the World Cup by the way that is winning their own tournament attempting to become European champions for a third time and Portugal and Cristiano Ronaldo they're aiming to win their first major international trophy Sissoko on the right hand side for France it's hooked across by Giroud, it reaches Payet, left side of the penalty area. Payet clips it back in and it's headed away on the edge of the area by José Font. And uh, it should be cleared away by João Mario, which it is, up towards Nani. who scored three goals in the tournament in three separate matches. Uh, but it is won back by Nani. And Nani to Renato Sanchez now, but the 18-year-old rather on his heels there. And it ran away from him, out of play. Danny Mills. Maybe a little bit of nerves from some of the Portuguese players at the moment. That's the third ball that's gone astray under no real pressure. Uh, but already, you know, even Nani tackling back, winning the ball off Pogba. I'm not sure we expected that before the game. Well, Fernando Santos 
the uh, the coach of Portugal. I think he's been tactically right on his game during the course of this tournament. And Portugal in the knockout stages, coming past Croatia, Poland, and Wales, all teams with really strong individual performers he's had a plan and it's worked against all of them and here's Payet now running with the ball freely gives it to Griezmann the great individual currently in this French side but Griezmann wasn't able to find the pass to Sissoko although he has won it back but it's deflected out of play for a throw into Portugal on the far side well, you can see already Everett's given him good width on the left hand side and what Payet does he starts sort of slightly away then he just drifts inside and really said that he's got to go with him because they've got enough bodies behind the ball, Portugal. They've got to go in tight on Pai. You can't let him turn and start running with the ball. The French anthem being sung again by the, the majority of the supporters inside the stadium who are supporting the host nation as Pepe heads the ball back, but Rui Patricio is able to move across to his left and catch the bouncing ball. It is a great stadium for an occasion like this. Huge open ball, three tiers all the way around and a capacity of almost 80,000. Most of the French cabinet are here this evening. The French president and the French prime minister, Portuguese president and the prime minister, Prince Albert of Monaco is here. A long ball through the middle. Nani Chester down and shoots goalwards, but always, always over the top of the crossbar and bouncing onto the blue carpet behind the goal that France are defending. Half chance, Koscielny loses Nani. I think we heard from Alex Ferguson on the BBC you know a while ago they said you know Nani Ronaldo they're match winners and they're the sort of moments difficult chances he chested it down going away from goal trying to hook the volley back across himself from outside the box but that's what France has got to be careful of Portugal will sit back as they are doing play very very deep allow France to have the ball and then they're quite happy to hit that one direct ball over the top Portugal nil France nil five live and the world service from the BBC on a beautiful evening here the temperature is wonderful no sign of the snow just yet for those who weren't listening earlier on the official te team sheet the UEFA team sheet the weather forecast says snow is expected uh, no problem from snow but an infestation of moths has been one of the talking points here's Griezmann now Payet that's a nice little ball in towards the edge of the penalty area Matuidi tried to thread it through but it was blocked on the edge of the penalty area and then Pepe good strong defending from him back in the field uh, team after injury Nani though with a deflected ball back comes to the edge of the area where Sissoko got right underneath a volley and sent it sailing high over the crossbar I like the way France have started got a good tempo about them you know, we know Portugal are playing deep but they're actually pressing them high up the field and they are suspect of a ball we saw before for Nani that one over the top where they get them up the field but so far France have really pushed Portugal back France who in all matches are unbeaten since they lost at Wembley which was that match four days after the pa uh, Paris attacks so there were certainly extenuating circumstances there and Portugal under Fernando Santos have not lost in 13 competitive matches but it's usually very tight here's Evra running the ball away from inside deep inside his own half and then finding a pass to Sissoko who does well nutmegs his opponent now gives it out to Payet on the left hand side Payet approaching the penalty area he's into the box he goes for the byline puts his foot on the ball clips it across right footed to the back post headed away by Guerrero headed further away now it's nodded back into the area Griezmann on his left foot the angle's tight and he blazes it wide by a distance of the near post. Fantastic pressure from France, keeping the ball inside the box. Brilliant break from Sissoko. Pace and power driving through the middle of the park. Payet, I'm not sure he should have checked back. Had the opportunity to cross it first time on his left foot. And eventually, when the chance came to Griezmann, he was just a little bit off balance. Leaning backwards on his left foot, the half volley. Just got the outside of his foot and five, six yards wide of the goal. But... As Chris said, very impressive start from France. Yeah, promising start to a final, Chris. You know, Portugal, Portugal wanted to be cagey, you can see that, but France aren't allowing them, France. and here they are. Well, front foot, John, they're really tempo, oh, fantastic, and they've obviously done the homework. They know Portugal want to sit back and try and slow the game down. They've come out really quick, and they can't handle it, Portugal, at the minute. Heavy touch from Renato Sanchez. Uh, Payet put the challenge in. Mark Clattenburg says, play on. I thought that might have been a free kick on him. And then Ronaldo, well, Payet clattered into Ronaldo, who has gone down and he's still writhing around Ronaldo but referee Clattenburg is having none of it uh, and the French attack breaks down and I think Portugal are going to pass it out of play they are so that Ronaldo can receive some treatment well he's made this and he's holding his knee 
it was a heavy challenge I've got to say but um, this is why France are playing they're on the front foot they're not letting Portugal put passes together they're anticipating the second ball all over the park and they are definitely on top Ronaldo is being sprayed I mean, Payet came in with a challenge Evera is there as well and he went down clutching his, his knee and he's still down he was slapping the turf as well and uh, he's still on his back on the on the pitch that was a bit of a welcome to the game for Ronaldo but Mark Clattenburg not a problem with that at all no it was, it was Payet's trailing leg uh, that caught Ronaldo's standing leg effectively you know Ronaldo had the ball on his right foot Payet went in with a strong challenge and they just collided it was knee on knee you know, and unfortunately Ronaldo's been caught just above the knee on that that little bit of his quad there it'll be a little bit sore well he's off the field the Portuguese captain just at the moment Mark Clattenburg stands Mark Clattenburg the, the first Englishman to referee the European Championship final since 1964 when Arthur Holland took charge of the final but it continues the, the recent record of uh, Englishmen refereeing major footballing occasions and the reason part of the reason for that is probably the fact that the, the national team fails to get very far in these competitions here's Pepe with the ball at the back right foot oh he slipped Pepe as he was closed down by Giroud and France are all over it and Pai with the ball Griezmann with the header and a leaping save by Rui Patricio to his right to palm it away from the top corner for a corner Pepe was a little bit unfortunate as you said he slipped as he was coming out from the back as he was closed down but great ball over the top and Griezmann great awareness sort of as it came over his shoulder just tried to flick it over top of Rui Patricio heading top corner an unbelievable one-handed save the crowd are alive here with noise because France have made such a strong start Payet with the corner it's a deep one and it's headed down but it's straight at Rui Patricio Giroud it was in amongst a crowd of players backpedalling but headed it down and straight at the goalkeeper and he got up nice and early Giroud he's can't get a palm he's getting a replay of Griezmann he's tried to just obviously lift it over the goalkeeper with his head he saw him off his lane great ball by Payet spotted the run so Portugal nil France nil Chris Waddle and Danny Mills part of the commentary team you'll hear from Alan Green later 10 minutes played and uh, here's Cedric Suarez Portugal have barely been out of their own half Renato Sanchez strongly challenged by Evra the uh, soon to be Bayern Munich player then the throw for Adrian Silva who is stretching for it France have won it back and Griezmann now plays it to the right hand side this Euro 2016 top scorer who is of Portuguese extraction Griezmann and two players in this Portuguese team were born in France Guerrero the left back and Adrian Silva ball in from the right hand side but it's blocked on the edge of the area by Font and now Renato Sanchez just plays it away and that just gives possession back to the French and they like it the, the Parisians and indeed the French people all over the stadium you need people to hold the ball up Portugal's got no tempo about them and they've been hitting what 40, 50 yard passes up to Ronaldo and Nani it's not their strength to beat target men and it's coming back so quick now France in possession once again ball played out to, to Payet here on the left hand side Fernando Santos the, uh, the coach prowling the edge of his technical area with his hands in his pockets but he looks a little uneasy France in possession inside their own half Koscielny who I should say has got strapping white strapping around his left knee the Arsenal central defender Koscielny um, Titi, only his third cap now Matuidi of Paris Saint-Germain to Payet of West Ham Payet skips in field his attempted pass in field is deflected to Evra now Matuidi again back into the centre circle to Paul Pogba Pogba through the middle to Sissoko who digs out a pass to Payet first time touch from him this is good stuff but Matuidi might be caught in possession here by Adrian Silva but he goes back into his own half and France will start again Matuidi playing it forward to Payet uh, and then it breaks down in the central third it was Griezmann who actually gave it away but a strong challenge from Umtiti and then it's collected in the centre circle for France by Pogba who holds off the challenge and then is actually just a little heavy from behind by Joao Mario and it's a free kick to France I think Portugal starts to give as good as they're getting France have started the game at a high tempo and aggressively as well every opportunity they're getting right up close trying to win the ball very very early off Portugal and up till now it's worked very very well but I think their 
Portuguese players just deciding enough's enough, you know, and they're going to have to fight back and battle back as well. Chances already in the game, even though it's nil-nil. France with the header from Griezmann that was saved, and the Giroud header from the corner. Nani with a chance at the other end, but that's the only sniff Portugal have had, and it is nil-nil. And uh, José Font, the Southampton captain, with the ball at the back. Playing it out towards the left-hand side to Rafael Guerrero, who's moving to Borussia Dortmund after this tournament and has impressed many at left-back. They've not really missed Fabio Coentra, who is injured. And now here's Sanchez on the right-hand side. He's got Cedric Suarez down the line, but he goes in field. Now Nani flicks it forward, but just gives it away, and France have possession back. And again, the anthem rings around the stadium. Hugo Lloris, the captain, chipping the ball away out towards the, the far side of the field where it's headed forward. They played up towards Ronaldo, who is very closely watched, too closely watched, says Mark Flattenberg. A foul on him by Koscielny. Free kick taken quickly up towards Adrian Silva. That's dealt with well at the back, though, by Bakary Sanya and France back in possession. I'm just looking how strong physically France are. They're really pumped up for the game. We know that. We've seen them. Every game they've been pumped, but the, the way they're getting close to Portugal, energy levels are fantastic. Second balls are winning every challenge. Uh, the match is on BBC Television tonight. We heard from Danny Murphy, Guy Mowbray's alongside him. But if you're on the way home, you can actually listen to our commentary synced up with the pictures via the red button, as long as you have satellite, cable, and connected televisions. So that's another option for you tonight. But this is five live in the World Service, and the ball at the back with France and uh, just knocking it around first little lull that we've had really as Umtiti the Barcelona bound Umtiti plays it to the fair haired Griezmann and now Pogba might he be on the move as well this summer now with Ever on the left hand side Patrice Evra 35 years old title winner again this season with Juventus and then Umtiti and France are just knocking it around but Portugal are quite happy for France to have it in this sort of area over the halfway line though Sissoko looks to get it back from Griezmann Sissoko takes it on over to the right hand side still Sissoko he's got Sanya available couldn't find the pass it's deflected out for a throw Sometimes you've got to be patient John and you know Portugal everybody behind the ball it's stopping the space it's hard to get up to the strikers you've just got to keep playing quick as you can move the ball keep moving it's switching it side to side and eventually you'll get your chance France take the throw, still nil-nil, uh, but it is won back by Portugal, and João Mario, who uh, has been quietly efficient, João Mario, quite a, a short figure, shaven-headed, the, the three midfielders for Portugal, João Mario, William Carvalho and Adrian Silva, all play for Sporting in Lisbon, so know each other's game very well, William Carvalho coming back into the team after suspension from for Danilo and Pepe returning to the side for Bruno Alves. France unchanged again, their team. Same team for quarter-final, semi-final and final. The ball with Portugal and here is the imposing William Carvalho who plays it out to oh, Renato Sanchez. And that's an awful miss from him. It just bounces as he backpedaled towards the touchline. He missed it altogether and it bounced out of play. I think they look very nervous, Portugal. And they've got a lot of inexperienced players, especially across that midfield. And I think oh, Ren Ren Ronaldo's Ronaldo gone again. down again. I thought he was doing sit ups here. <laughs> He's, he was flat on his back, Ronaldo, away from the play. And the ball's been put out by Lauren Koscielny. He's crying, I think, John. He is, he's crying. There are tears tears in his eyes I think that knee that, that clash on his knee I think he is he is in tears he's in tears Ronaldo is sitting on the pitch he's surrounded by his concerned teammates but this reaction from Cristiano Ronaldo I mean Nani has gone across there and Nani has got his hand on the back of his neck Ronaldo the reading of this you would have to say it looks as though Ronaldo knows he's not going to be able to continue well they're putting an ice pack on it at the minute I know that was going to help but um, obviously I clashed with Payet which was accidental He's obviously uh, did something to his knees, not happy about it, as you saw. We all saw him go to the ground and then he starts crying, so I can't see him carrying on. Well, we know anyone who talks about him says, you know, what a, what a winner he is, what a professional he is. And, you know, this occasion tonight, Portugal never having won an international tournament, a chance here to do something that, that no one's ever done with Portugal, the great Eusebio, and, and all of the Portuguese greats and he might not be able to continue in this match and we've played only 17 minutes 
I just say it's taken some time for him to go down since that incident. And he went, he's been moving around. Okay, well, a little bit gingerly at times. But suddenly it just collapsed to the floor under no, for no real reason. It just seems, seems strange that you would... He, he's on his feet now, Danny. Minutes to do that. He's on his feet, he's walking off the field, but he's rolling he's his tongue round the off. inside of his mouth. And, and he knows, he's looking across at Fernando Santos. He's got his hands on his hips. They're going to see what they can do. Two more medical people have appeared in the, in the black outfits with the orange trim. And, and they're working on that, that lower left leg. Of course, he did have the injury, didn't he, at the end of the season? He was a bit of a doubt for the Champions the, League final. They're putting a strapping on it, John. They've tried ace for a quick ace bag. They're putting a strapping on it now, thinking, will it... But if it's inside, what can you do? He never comes off, does he? Well, if, if it's at all possible for him to continue, then they're going to send him back out there. And certainly, Ronaldo is not going to leave the field unless he absolutely has to. But I think in himself, he knows the game is up here. And if he comes back on, it'll be for only a limited period of time. So, that changes the game, doesn't it? Portugal defending with 10 men. They're playing with 10 men for the time being because Ronaldo is off the field. Uh, the coach, Fernando Santos, has just come over now and had a look at Ronaldo. And they are strapping up his, his upper calf and his knee with some beige strapping. But just looking down there, is it Charisma warming up? Uh, no, the ideal player this swap, that, yeah. That might come on. But he's not going, what you're going through is a, a rigorous warm-up. He's just stood there having a little stretch. Portugal breaking away with the ball. Here's William Carvalho running free and away from Griezmann. Still William Carvalho giving it to João Mario on the left-hand side. João Mario on his right foot just checks back and plays it to the left-hand side. Cedric Sua uh, Guerrero is out there. Ronaldo, I think, is going to come back onto the field. He's flexing his left leg. He's got his green sock pulled up over that strapping. The ball with Portugal on the left-hand side. Uh, Nani moving infield but overrunning it. And France win possession back and will break away with Giroud, who shows too much of it to Pepe, who just whacks it downfield out of play near the corner flag. So Ronaldo can come back onto the field. Now he's been off for four minutes. It's four minutes since he went down. Still nil nil by the way the score. Let's see how it goes. Actually Portugal had a good spell when he was off in four minutes. We did actually see Portugal play, didn't we? In the friendly against England, the last match before the tournament, when if you remember, when Bruno Alves was sent off and they were incredibly difficult to break down. That was a bit of a, a taster of uh, of how Portugal have been. Very well drilled. Well, Ronaldo, let's keep an eye on him. He's gone over onto the left-hand side. 20 minutes played, five live and the world service. And it is still nil-nil. Half-time, we'll hear more from Andy Murray, by the way, after his Wimbledon triumph today. We've brought you commentary from Wimbledon today on Andy Murray's victory over Milos Ryanic. We've brought you commentary on Lewis Hamilton winning the British Grand Prix. Chris Froome retains the overall lead at the Tour de France as well. And here it's the final of Euro 2016. Ronaldo going for a header. And winning it. And he seems... Is he running gingerly? And he, he cannot be right. But Portugal, defender. France with Griezmann. And, uh, and then Evra back into his own path. It's rather disrupted the flow of the game, actually, the whole Ronaldo well, drama. The guitars have dropped off Portugal. I know they were playing deep anyway, but now uh, Ronaldo's even just went and stood on that left side we're just happy to let have France the two centre halves in particular have the ball and it is Sissoko who's taken it up again strong running for him left foot shot flies over the top of the bar by about a yard but again Sissoko willing to run with the ball to the edge of the area and it's taken a flick off a defender says Mark Plattenberg and it's a corner great pace great determination he's picked the ball up in those central areas and he's prepared to just drive at people we saw him do that occasionally for Newcastle this is, the sort of, this is the sort of play from Sissoko if you remember Steve McLaren at the start of the season talking about building the Newcastle team around Sissoko that didn't happen well it just doesn't turn up often enough well, certainly not for Newcastle anyhow Payet with the corner then for France here it is Rui Patricio has come for it and he's caught it well actually as the defenders and attackers bore down on him Portugal breaking away Ronaldo's just not right he's in fact he's pulled up and he's given the single signal he is going to have to leave the field 
even though Portugal continue this attack with Renato Sanchez cutting in field on his right foot and playing it across there's a flick there but France will clear it so we've reached the midway point of the first half in the Euro 2016 final and here's Alan Green to take up the commentary well as soon as the play stops surely Ronaldo will be substituted but the ball's played in towards Cristiano Ronaldo in the penalty and then uh, the header, uh, defensive header uh, fell to Edwin Silva and his shot was well well wide now, there's a hold up in play are you coming on? no he's good down again what he did was he took his captain's armband off and he threw it down now he's sitting down and that surely should be enough for Fernando Santos and Charisma will come on for Cristiano Ronaldo why has he gone down though? he was jumping for Borromeo all he has to do is just walk off the yeah. pitch yeah. I mean I might be being a bit harsh but it's cynical. theatrical well it's it's attention seeking isn't it? <laughs> As let's, said, just, let's be honest it's nothing more than that yeah like, once a stretch I know yeah I think well, he, wants, uh, he, wants, he wants the ovation doesn't he going off the pitch yeah well now he's going to be captain in Ronaldo's absence once more he bursts into tears you know, thought the first flood of tears might have been enough look no one wants to see uh, a big player like Ronaldo being injured but it was clear uh, initially and that was all of eight minutes ago that he wasn't likely to carry on the Portuguese fans are devastated at seeing their talisman being lifted onto a stretcher and now taken off the pitch in the final of the European Championship 2016 and well done the French fans who universally are applauding the opposing captain well it's interesting now Alan because there's probably a little bit more expectation on France and a little bit more pressure on them to go and win the game. You know, now that obviously Portugal's main man has gone off the pitch, so that might make it a little bit more difficult for France in terms of pressure. Uh, Charisma coming on again. I think you know he wants to be Ronaldo. It's his big chance now to, to prove it. But I just wonder now, you know, how would it be if Portugal now went on to win this? I think there'd be even more tears from Ronaldo, and I'm not convinced they'd be tears of joy. I think he feels rather sorry for himself. But really, it was uh, of Academy Award winning material that he's hurt, and he's had to be substituted, and he's not the only key player that that's happened to. But of course, this is a major final. We played 25 minutes here at the Stade de France in Paris. Uh, certainly the injury to Ronaldo has disrupted the game markedly it hasn't recovered the excitement of the first quarter of an hour Nani is now through the middle Charisma is down the right side so Nani who you know I think actually Nani's performances over this European Championship have been more I important than he's Ronaldo's shown, he's showed uh, glimpses of what he's about and again he's a a hit and miss player but uh, Charisma comes out he allows Sanchez to go into the midfield probably where he wants to play Sanchez has been uh, peripheral so far here he is now feeding the ball towards the left side to Guerrero the left back for Portugal into Sanchez once more Sanchez taps it back to William Carvalho and on it comes to the right side in the substitute Charisma Charisma who's uh, come on both games for Portugal uh, sort of step over trying to confuse Payet still has possession uh, feeds it forward here's Cedric Suarez Cedric Suarez gets the cross in toward the far post the header down uh, from Mario but that's not going to get into trouble Larice. I don't think Lloris has had a, a save to make I don't count that one either Lloris throws the ball out to Mteti what an introduction to international football he's had makes his debut in a European Championship quarter final his second appearance in a semi-final and now here is third cap in the final here he is once more soon to be with Barcelona in Spain on to Pogba and to the far side of the field to Sanya back to Pogba Sissoko's been as important Danny is any French player so far yeah he has you know when he gets the ball in those central areas and drives at players it's nothing worse as a defender when someone's prepared to do that you know, and he might be might be pivotal I'm just looking Portugal already they just seem to have a little bit of better balance about the sign maybe at times they do look too heavily 
Trinaldo and we saw you know what a good performance they put in at Wembley they've got a throw in on this near side of the field uh, Ronaldo of course missed that match he was still recovering from the uh, let's say the passion and the excitement engendered by the Champions League final Pepe didn't play in that game either on the far side of the field Guerrero Guerrero to uh, João Mario into Silva Silva under pressure from Griezmann uh, force a retreat and now he plays it back to Font one of two Southampton players in this Portuguese lineup to Sanchez and back to the goalkeeper Patricio who's made two very good saves so far I think Alan Portugal just cut quite happy to pass the ball around they're not really adventurous are they no. they're just trying to take the sting out of the game and yes France have kept the tempo up it's got up to 28 minutes now and they've started to feel the pace it's a very warm evening they're going to come off the pace slightly France and maybe that's where Portugal's waiting to well, try and get a counter attack or a set piece that's, that's what Portugal have been like most of the championship haven't they done oh they take penalties now Portugal guarantee it here's Giroud for France Giroud uh, to the left of the Portuguese penalty area. two Portuguese defenders across one of them touches the ball it's gone out of play Mark Clattenburg says the throwing is France's which Evra will take 35 years of age now Evra like Danny I spotted how Evra was doing all the talking in the huddle pre-match now Matridi after the throw-in crosses it towards the far post Guerrero with a flicked header clear kept in play by Sanya in the far side of the field plays it back to Pogba it was slightly under hit Pogba did well was strong enough to resist the challenge now it's back to Koscielny inside the French half right in the centre circle 29 minutes gone here on 5 Live of the World Service it's still France no Portugal now and here's Sissoko running forward again into the penalty great run pulls it across back hits the defender goes behind for the corner he's well done to Sissoko Sissoko has been actually you know what I like about it yes everybody's passing the ball and France are passing it very early trying to move but what he's done is every time he's picked it up he's trying to attack the space and he's committing defenders uh, I don't know if Newcastle will be able to hold on to him but his value's gone up by millions here's the corner headed away uh, by Portugal and it's coming towards this near side uh, Pogba keeps it in play Pogba faced by Cedric Suarez and he steps inside Suarez he's up to the edge of the penalty area now and then Suarez gets a foot on the ball and diverts another play for a throw into France Portugal having suffered the blow of losing their captain Ronaldo who first went down injured after 16 minutes but finally left the action after 25 minutes Charisma replacing him a substitute we've now got a quarter of an hour and a half time France nil, Portugal nil. Everest throwing to Giroud. Giroud squeezes the ball back in the direction of Evra, but it's uh, wide of the fullback, and it's out now for a Portuguese throw in. Their balance is quite good at the moment, Portugal, but I'm not sure how much ambition they've got. Well, Alan, we've seen them a few times, yep. and they haven't really shown an awful lot of ambition full stop in this competition so far. No, we, we know they're quite happy to almost play for the draw. Here's Giroud, on towards Griezmann in the penalty here. Two defenders back there, and they help their goalkeeper, Patricio, get to the ball first. You know, the Croatia game, can you imagine how bad that was? Yeah, but the longer this game goes on, and what are we now, 15 minutes away from half-time, if they get to half-time, it's still nil-nil. They'll start to grow in belief. They're not using a great deal of energy. They're all just sitting back behind the ball, allowing France to have it. So I think you know the longer the game goes, but the more difficult and the more pressure will build on the French team. Sanchez has moved into the middle, but so far uh, he's no more effective than he was in the wide right position in the early stages of the game. It's with Umtiti, the central defender for France, to Payet, back to Umtiti, and he sweeps it to his right to Koscielny. Umtiti once more. France have slowed their pace markedly. And they were maybe caught up in the drama first quarter for now they were almost irresistible France seemed as if they would score very soon but they haven't 13 minutes to half time Koscielny on the far side the right chips it forward good run forward into the penalty area and then it was a sort of shove by the defender on Sanya and uh, it's behind for a goal kick to Portugal well positive play again you've got to say France are definitely on the front but they're the team looking to get forward and try and make something happen Portugal are very happy as Danny just said before they, they just want to play extra time and go to the penalty shootout because they, they've got no ambition at all to go and win this game at the minute well they did exactly the same against Croatia they, they, never, yeah, had, yeah. they, they never had a shot on target 
until 116 minutes when it looks certain to go to penalties and finally Ronaldo had the shot keeper saved it and obviously the, the rebound was put in and they've done that in, in several games in the next round they went to a shootout against Poland and got through of course and Matuidi wins the ball but can't keep hold of possession and then Fock is rushing into an error hitting the ball I defend the near side of the field some of the footballs just lapse in terms of its quality a big figure has left the stage Ronaldo out of the game injured Giroud heads the ball down to Griezmann Griezmann flicks it on towards the left side and tie it just a couple of yards outside the penalty here in it goes and that's a great turn wonderful turn by Pogba the shot straight at Patricio makes a good save and now it's head out of play by Portugal by Cohen great save for Patricio marvellous little Cruyff turn by Sissoko turned inside the defender and hit it straight at the goalkeeper I think Patricio was lucky either side of him I think he might have been struggling it's Ntetti Ntetti chips the ball down the left side for France Payet uh, takes only the ball in his chest and takes a raised foot by uh, Cedric Suarez uh, it's a free kick to France and a yellow card for the fullback well he's got to get a yellow card he's very late and uh, he's got no option he's late he's high he's knees in his back as well definite yelling he's got to watch now because Payet's got the beat him just seeing that replay with Pogba shot good save by the keeper but again Sissoko so, so shot, shot, yeah, great shot great shot great effort ball played in from the free kick into the penalty here caught by Patricio and now it's with Nani who's the captain of Portugal in the absence of Ronaldo that's a great cross field ball Caresma chases after it should no I thought he was about to keep it in play but he didn't maybe he was uh, put off by the appearance of the assistant on this goal line also by the closeness of the advertisement holding either way the ball went out for a throw in 10 minutes to go to half time here on 5 Live in the World Service on the BBC the final of the European Championship 2016 France nil, Portugal nil. Andy Murray won the men's singles title at Wimbledon Lewis Hamilton won the British Grand Prix it's been a fantastic day of sport all across 5 Live and we're hoping for a, a really good final tonight here at the Stade de France. It began very brightly. The absence of Ronaldo has uh, put a dampener on things somewhat. Here's Giroud. Giroud falls over, loses the ball to Sanchez. Sanchez clears it to Nani. Back to Charisma. Charisma feeds it forward. Nani chases after it. The reach out of his penalty area and heads the ball out of play on the far side of the field for a throw into Portugal. Giroud has picked up a knock as well. Got caught on the top of the ankle that challenge from Renato Sanchez just getting to his feet now moving a, a little bit gingerly here's Pepe uh, to Cedric Suarez on the right side for Portugal and the ball back from Caresma was slightly under hit but William Carvalho kept it for Portugal finding Pepe and now back to Font and on to Silva Font once more I think Portugal have looked better since Ronaldo went off definitely better balanced you know that is for sure but France have the ball then Griezmann a little loose in possession gives it away again here's Joao Mario popping up at the right hand side for a change finds Sanchez the 18 year old he's not officially 18 they published his birth certificate uh, in papers over the last couple of days after there was controversy about uh, an alleged discrepancy in his age but also with, with Portugal I mean it, does it make Santos's job easier at half time so look go and prove everybody wrong you know everybody has said you know this team's about Cristiano you know he's now gone off go and prove everybody out there wrong and you can win this without him William Carvalho the font and uh, the Portuguese fans that are uh, singing at the moment they're largely grouped in the far left hand corner the ball's out of play on the far side throw into France less than eight minutes left in the first half throwing taken by Sandy the Kachelny and on now to Ntiti Ntiti uh, forward and it's played on by Matuidi Payet back to Pogba Pogba the raking ball in the direction of Griezmann uh, headed away by Pepe here's Guerrero to Sanchez for Portugal that's a lovely turn by the 18 year old and then oh, he 
gave Charisma an awful lot to do. Charisma did well, he was fouled. Good advantage played by Mark Clattenburg. Nanny takes it up, approaching the French penalty area. The angle's very acute, he cuts inside, plays it back. Here's an opportunity for Silva. Silva didn't realise how much space he had. Dilly Dilly in the ball, almost lost it, and finally the shot driven in by Guerrero. Took a deflection, it's a corner. Well, that's the first time we've really seen Portugal be positive trying to get into the box of uh, France. Nani does very well, and then there's a bit of a scramble, it comes away, eventually it's a deflection. And this is the first set piece, and I think they'll carry, carry a threat. Down. Yeah, they'll carry a threat from these corners. Well, I didn't see what happened there, but uh, I think Karez was actually also clutching his left knee. Yeah, Mark Clattenburg, it was the initial challenge, and Mark Clattenburg did very, very well with the ball. Played the advantage. Nani. Yeah, yep. uh, and allowed them to, to carry on, it's Umtiti. Just caught him a little bit late. He eh? just stood on his foot. That's it. Well, he's up. And hopefully for Portugal, he's OK. They've already lost their captain, Cristiano Ronaldo, because of injury. The corner to Portugal from the right. João Mario takes it. Right-footed. And the header was in uh, by fault, but uh, high and over the crossbar. Goal kick. Difficult chance for him. He had to go from a, a standing jump. The ball was almost going behind him. He just had to adjust his run and couldn't get enough spring to get above the ball early enough and head it downwards. Yeah, what Portugal needed in those circumstances, I have to say, is the hanging of Ronaldo. Now I pay it for France, approaching the Portuguese penalty. Swings it in towards the far post, a header on by Giroud, and it's caught by the goalkeeper, Patricia. Oh, good play, Sissoko again, running with the ball, driving it, defenders running across the field this time. Gives it to Payet. Early ball in this time, but again, Portugal have defended well with the balls coming in the box. Patricia looks very secure in goal. He's actually catching it tonight instead of punching yes. it all the time. Lloris smacked it upfield, left foot on the volley, and then it's headed up by Pepe. And it falls to Karezma. Karezma holding off Matuidi. Karezma holding off Matuidi once more. I think he looked at Mark Landberg as if to say, I'll take the free kick, but they still have the advantage in possession Portugal so the referee allows the game to flow as he should do a little over five minutes left on five live in the world service to half time here in the BBC Sanchez to William Carvalho and William Carvalho plays it through the centre circle to Pepe Pepe over the halfway line now to Karesma neat layoff to Sanchez on it goes and then Silva was a little ambitious in his attempted pass to Karesma France take it up and they counter attack now it took Griezmann Griezmann, good ball in field to Payet, and Payet runs away from Silva, on it goes to Sissoko, much the better, best player on the French side in these opening 40 minutes, and now edge of the penalty here with Payet, Payet shot, takes a deflection, squirts away to the far side, Sanya declines to cross it first time, turns it onto his left foot, there's the cross, headed, headed away quite simply by Portugal, and now Sanchez, and the game is opened up once more, Sanchez over the halfway line, left of the centre circle, and plays it on towards the left side Pogba's there to challenge but Karezma holds off Pogba oh that's a corner it's Murillo and Murillo did very well initially and he's got a corner seeing some great spells in this game being played at really good tempo for two technically gifted sides as well very very physical match temperature was certainly in the 80s at kick off time I'm sure it felt an awful lot worse down there and the moss that have invaded the Stade de France um, for this final well there were so many of them on the pitch free kickoff. I wonder if they're still there anyway the corner's taken short and then it's played in by Portugal uh, Pepe went to meet the header didn't get enough on it Portugal pick up possession again Silva squirts it forward but that's uh, over hit and it's behind for a goal kick oh, just luck and ideas on Port Portugal and you know, this, they're competing well, especially when France get over the halfway line. But going forward, we've seen very little. And I still think set pieces are their best way of scoring a goal. Danny Mills and Chris Waddle are summarizers here on Five Live in the World Service tonight, here at the Stade de France in Paris. For the final of the European Championship 2016. France nil, Portugal nil. But it has not been a dull game. And of course, one of the highlights, stroke lowlights, was. The injury to Ronaldo that forced him off the field after 25 minutes. The injury first happened after 16 minutes, but it took nine minutes for bench and player to finally make up their minds that he could not carry on. I should, that was Pogba who ran forward. Pogba lost the ball. 
and it's with Guerrero on the far side of the field. Both uh, the Portuguese fullbacks are quite diminutive. The referee spotted something. He's given a free kick, I think, to Portugal. Yes, he has. Got a ball brought on. Oh, what, what's he doing? Well, he just bounced the ball. I didn't see what happened there. Did you? No idea what he did there. It's possible that ball has burst on the far side of the field. I mean, I don't know. May well, well, it's just been left there. None of the ball boys have picked it up, but unless the yeah, said it, unless the ball's gone flat or something. Yeah, very, very strange. Anyway, it was a bounce ball, so there was no free kick. And we've got a little over two minutes to go to half time here. Uh, Consider all hold us because of the injury and the treatment to Ronaldo and then the subsequent treatment to Ronaldo. So we might have at least three minutes of added time at the end of the first half. Portugal in possession on the far side of the field. That's good play by João Mario. João Mario runs, hoping for support from Guerrero. But the final touch was off a French player, so it's going to be a throw in to Portugal taken by Guerrero into the acting captain Nani Nani just on the edge of the penalty here. back to Guerrero uh, and then it squirts behind but it's off Guerrero and it's a goal kick to France well like we said if Portugal can get to half time at nil nil I think they'll be absolutely delighted France started the game very very well high tempo clearly had the better chances Luis Figo watching on and um, now they need a player of his quality oh. in that final third, just to create oh, something. Yes. And, you know, Ronaldo does have his faults, but no one wants to see Ronaldo off the field injured, not on a major occasion like this. But he is off, no more impact in the game from the Portuguese captain. Inside the last minute of the regular 45 here, Griezmann for France. Uh, tapped on by Suzuko de Paia taken up by Griezmann again Griezmann runs towards the penalty and then he ran into a defender and it was partly played to safety Suzuko takes it up again to Giroud Giroud a couple of yards outside the penalty to Sanya the far side of the field Sanya swings in the cross that's too high for Griezmann Griezmann goes down turns and looks at Mark Clattenburg and hopes that the referee will be pulled into giving the penalty he doesn't no, I looked at him in hope rather than anything else. It was just in between two players. Got a little bit of a nudge uh, from Cedric Suarez. Fell into Pepe. Mark Plattenberg not having any of it. But it wasn't a penalty. No, definitely not. So, Cedric Suarez with a throw in for Portugal. I'm waiting for the fourth official to appear. Um, and finally, he comes out. Now, there was a, I think there was a collision of heads there. Yeah, Evra and Charisma just both of them went up for the ball Evers oh, followed yes, through and caught him in the back of the head it's an unfortunate one but a bit of sore for both of them I think the ball has just gone up for two minutes well two minutes seems very mean considering well, the they've time got, they've got that wrong haven't they haven't they the time that Ronaldo had treatment on the pitch not once but twice and even though we're into added on time now none of this counts for the players are both receiving treatment it'll take a while how do you think Fernando Santos will be feeling, Danny? Happy? I think he will be. Clearly, he'll be, he'll be a little bit disappointed. But obviously, he's had to lose his star man. But ultimately, they do look a bit more balanced. We've seen Ronaldo a couple of times. In a couple of games, he hasn't looked particularly interested. He hasn't done an awful lot. He's scored uh, great goals, games. but other than that, nothing. So, in terms of balance of the team, maybe it might work for them. And Deschamps, Chris? I think he'd be a little bit disappointed they've had all the play the, the final third again like we've saw a lot in this tournament that cutting edge and that's what they've been lacking I think the tempo's been good I think uh, they're up for it you can see that they've, they've won a lot of balls especially the first 20 minutes 25 minutes got in good areas just couldn't pick the pass out and that would be disappointing for them play resumes after 46 minutes and 20 seconds but strictly speaking the two minutes of added time start now Portugal in possession on the far side of the field on their left flank back to William Carvalho both players are okay Charisma and Eva and here is Charisma Charisma faced by Payet Charisma halfway inside the French half being hustled by Matuidi uh, hustled and giving the ball away and then France give the ball away and Guerrero runs forward Guerrero approaching the French penalty here pleasure to Murillo Murillo with a cross in but it's uh, beyond Danny and is behind for a goal kick half chance there decent ball in to the far post but nobody really gambled and read it 
that's really when you want Cristiano Ronaldo. You know, those balls coming into the box. Well, I think once they get in at half time, you know, I don't know, Santos will be able to have a word with his team. Maybe just tweak a couple of things, but it won't change an awful lot. They'll keep sitting back, they'll be happy, you know, and they'll just want to frustrate France as long as they possibly can. I don't forget the significance about a time at the end of the first half in the game at uh, Marseille on Thursday night when Germany had dominated the first half against France and from nowhere Schweinsteiger handled the ball and it was a penalty kick now I can't believe that Mark Plattenberg has blown his whistle we did not have the two minutes of added time final thought from Chris Denny well I think France have been a better side just but again final third just let them down I think the tempo has been good from them the shape looks good there's a lot of movements the so-called particular has caught the eye but um, final third not enough quality I think France will just have to up the tempo again Deschamps not been afraid to change it so far during this tournament he might just tweak it now without that extra threat of Ronaldo up front he might just change things and well it already looks like Coman might be coming on um, gone straight out for a warm up and given a ball so that might be one of the changes uh, France need to start the second half the way they started the first half at half time it's 0-0 thanks Mark Fernando Santos actually said yesterday that this final will not be Cristiano Ronaldo's final match for Portugal. However, it is the last match for our football producer, Alastair Yeomans, who has just delivered his last half-time team talk to us. So we're going to miss very much his uh, organisation, certainly his professionalism, and I think most of all, his company. So uh, you will still hear Alastair on Five Live, by the way. He wasn't very generous with a chop. <laughs> he wasn't, though. <laughs> Other producers are more generous. Right, Portugal against France. Start of the second half. Uh, the other thing we haven't mentioned, the bride and groom who are in the stand down in front of us, in full wedding gear. I think they might be a little bit sweaty in that by the end of the I evening. I think they might be. So, let's hope that Portugal and France put on a show for the bride and groom and, and everyone else inside the Stade de France in the second half. As France begin the second period... Mark Plattenberg and his officials in place and Portugal now with Rui Patricio on goal back four of Cedric, Pepe, Font and Guerrero midfield of Cavalho, Adrian Silva, João Mario and, uh, and then Ricardo Quaresma the substitute Renato Sanchez and Nani who's taken over the captaincy from Cristiano Ronaldo as Nani is, is bundled over and it's a free kick to Portugal halfway inside his own half um, um, Titi just caught him actually on the foot and, and Nani has actually stayed down as well now this would be a, this would be a significant problem wouldn't it he's actually split his football boot with his studs he caught him and he's actually a rip uh, there's a rip in his boot so yeah. yeah and he's looking at Mark Clattenburg he's back on his feet Nani I think he's going to be okay uh, the French team, so no changes at half-time. Loris in goal. Back four is Sanya, Koscielny, Umtiti and Evra. Uh, Pogba and Matuidi. Sissoko, Griezmann, Payet and Giroud. France started the first half very strongly, but then came the injury to Ronaldo. Uh, here's Giroud through the middle, but he's challenged by Pepe. And Portugal in the red shirts with the dark red sleeves, red shorts and green socks against France in the blue shirts, blue shorts and red socks. Portugal playing from right to left as we look in the second period. Our commentary position in the middle tier, right at the front. It's an excellent position to watch this final that's been played on a beautiful summer's evening. It's just beginning to get darker and the moths are heading towards the floodlights. Here is Sissoko playing it towards the edge of the penalty area and, and Pepe is then caught. And Pepe is down and, and Pepe is off. Well, it wouldn't be a show without punch, would it? And Pepe has given it the full three rolls. He's rubbing his leg. He's sitting up now. Sissoko is standing with his palms apart as if to say, what's all that about? It's a foul. And that's all it is. It's a trip, isn't it? Mark Clattenburg didn't look very impressed. He kept his tongue in his mouth, though, did he? Thank God. Here is Renato Sanchez playing it back into central defence. So it's Portugal nil, France nil. This is Five Live and the World Service from the BBC on this packed Sporting Sunday. And uh, Joseph Font with his white wristbands. 
hitting a long right-footed pass down into the French right-back area where it's headed forward by Sanya. Here's Karesma with this new haircut that he's got, especially for the final. It's a sort of yellow laurel wreath that he has cut into his into the hair on his head because that's the laurel wreath that's on the coat of arms of Portugal. What will they think of next? Here's William Carvalho. He just had to put in a little five-yard sprint to keep possession. And now it's back with Guerrero, the left-back. And Portugal keeping possession inside their own half. Pepe, who seems to have recovered from that knock. Sanchez, now forward towards João Mario. And then Cedric, and João Mario involved again. Cedric's continued his run into the penalty area, but of course comes the covering challenge from Lauren Koscielny to chip it out of play. Portugal take a quick throw in over on the far side. Uh, and then the cross over the top of Nani, and it runs away, all, right away over to the far side of the field here on the left as uh, Guerrero keeps it in play, gets it back. Rafael Guerrero takes on and beats Sissoko, but his attempted cross is deflected off Sissoko and through to goalkeeper Lurie. So five live in the World Service, Chris Waddle and Danny Mills, England World Cup footballers, watching the match with us. Chris. Uh, very rarely we see Portugal adventure forward. Uh, wasn't too by the time goes to Lloris. Just looking at the subs, Gignac's warm look quite thin with Coleman. I, I think they will give him that 10 minutes. I don't think he's out with Giroud at the minute. And um, he's got to get somebody who can get round the back of this back four. Here is Umtiti, the 22-year-old central defender, playing it across to Kishelmi at the other end of his career. Then back to the halfway line, Griezmann. We've seen relatively few chances in the match, really. The Griezmann header. Here's Sissoko. And he's taken every opportunity he can to run at Portugal. And that's what he's doing here. Gets a fortunate bounce of the ball. The Newcastle man. Was made captain by Rafa Benitez, if you remember, at the back end of last season. Here's Payet. Now to the right-hand side. To Sanya. Bakary Sanya. League Cup winner with Manchester City this season. Payet takes it on through the middle. Beats two men. But then Pepe is there with a good, strong challenge in the D. And Portugal look to break away, but it comes to nothing. And France have a throw in on the halfway line, Danny Mills. Well, we've seen the best and the worst of Pepe, haven't we? You know, that ridiculous roll over like he'd been shot. And then suddenly, as Pyatt goes through, great little feet, switching the ball from one foot to the other. Looked like he's going to get the shot away, and suddenly Pepe steps in with a fantastic challenge. Portugal nil, France nil. Portugal, who've never won one of the major tournaments. Their, their best was when they were runners-up, on home soil when they hosted Euro 2004 here's Payet through the middle barged by Renato Sanchez Payet kept his feet though he could have gone down there but he, he thought he might have an opening but it came to nothing and Renato Sanchez now with his long flowing hair plays the ball to the right hand side and uh, Cedric is there the Southampton right back Cedric Suarez Nani has shrugged off the ball easily by Matuidi and France have got it back. Great energy levels France have shown tonight. You know, they're really pumping up for this game. Just need that bit of quality. We just get that 18 yard lane that he just can't see that final ball, get the shot up. Fouled by Nani. Just a little heavy on Sissoko. And uh, he climbs to his feet. Nil nil. Already six minutes played in the second half. And the, the French supporters are. Uh, are beginning to uh, crank up the volume here all around the stand to our right and indeed all around the Stade de France now on their feet, bouncing, watching Sissoko once again driving Fokker Sissoko's ball across but easily dealt with by Pepe who comes across and is able to left foot it out of play for a throwing down here next to the corner flag Sissoko's playing fantastic John it was a really clever ball he just got half a yard it just sort of did not too much pace on the ball, he's put it into an area, but nobody gambled. You know, Giroud, he's Griezmann, they've got to gamble when they see that ball out wide. Get across the first defender. It's his corner, actually. Griezmann to take it, left footed. Here it is, Rui Patricio's come for it, he doesn't get it cleanly, it bounces down and he's able to leap on it at the second attempt. He's been very, very positive, Rui Patricio, from set pieces, the, the Portuguese goalkeeper. He's played well tonight, he normally punches everything, doesn't he? Shots in everything, but uh, tonight... He's actually come and caught a lot of things. Used to be called Rui Pedro, but changed his name to Rui Patricio. And he just sounds a little bit more international footballer, which is what he is. Here the ball is with France, a throw-in. That has moved across to Umtiti. And now 
Pogba. It's not been a great influence on the on the match, Pogba. But here's this long pass which, well, Giroud will struggle to reach that. He doesn't reach it. And it trickles out of play over on the far side for a throw-in to Portugal. Olivier Giroud's club manager, Arsene Wenger, is here as he has been throughout the tournament working for French television. We've seen lots of him. Long ball downfield. Umtiti heads it away. And now Sissoko again, moving away from Ronaldo Sanchez. Sissoko playing into the left-hand side. Payet now drifting in from the left, plays it across. It hits Cedric Suarez. Comes back to Payet. Payet beats him. Crosses. It's over Giroud. And it's headed away by Guerrero. And he, Griezmann was behind him. It's come out for Pogba, who's going to hit a... A dipping volley, but it was over the top by a yard or more. More good defending from Portugal. Resolute in defence. You know, making sure that any... Someone's run on the field on the far side and has sprung a cartwheel. And the, the stewards are after him and have caught him. And, uh, and have landed on top of him and will take him away. And he'll be getting three meals a day for nothing. Just makes you wonder how that can happen on a night when you know security has been so tight here at the Stade de France. It's a decent somersault though, I think it was a triple self go jump. He actually, came, cartwheel. he actually came running out of the tunnel on the far side. I, I think. But anyhow, just he's before that, he's been carted away anyway. Decent defending from Portugal. You know, they have been very resolute in defence, very, very solid, limiting France to really chances from distance. So this is the final of Euro 2016. Portugal nil, France nil. And Portugal ever so well drilled at this tournament without Cristiano Ronaldo, who is winning his 133rd cap tonight, which extends his record, 61 goals. And obviously, Cristiano Ronaldo, who, who twice burst into tears on the time that he was out there on the field. He tried to continue, had his left knee bandaged up, but in the end had to be stretched off so that's left a, a huge hole but if they, they are nothing this Portuguese side of Fernando Santos if, they, if not well drilled and they're just keeping the ball now inside their own half here's Jose Font who came up to the Premier League from League One with Southampton remember Font now uh, João Mario that's strong from Pogba though Payet in the centre circle Kishelny as a moth lands on my head now it's up to Nani, Adrian Silva, João Mario on the left-hand side. He's using Guerrero. Guerrero plays it forward to João Mario. Two Portuguese players in the middle. That's a good-looking cross, but it's headed down by Titi at the near post for a corner. Oh, a rare occasion again. Portugal breaks. Some nice football. Worked the flank, left flank well. Good ball in, a lot of pace on it. Good position until he gets it away. It's a corner to Portugal. Now I think this is their best chance of scoring set piece. Koresma is going to take this corner from the left hand side. Koresma comes up, takes it into the near post, that's easily headed away. Under no pressure at all. Evra stationed on the corner of the D, just headed it down and out of play for a throw, which is taken now to Koresma, but he was twisting. Oh, double deflection of the ball, and then it's hooked out of play for a, a throw in to Portugal. Just down to our left here, in front of the Portuguese bench where Fernando Santos is pointing and telling Guerrero where to throw it, which he does, back to Font on the halfway line. Now Pepe to William Carvalho. And then a little touch to Renato Sanchez. Sanchez to Adrian Silva. And now Font once again. We might be about to see a French change. Indeed, Kingsley Coman is going to come on imminently. He is ready to go. So that's the change we thought might happen at half-time. And um, the ball will go out of play now, so I think we will see that change now. Didier Deschamps, this will be France's first change. And France have a throw and wanted to take it quickly. Now, who will it be? It is Payet. You're right, Chris. Well, I think the last couple of games he's found it hard. The count don't seem happy. There's a few balls, I think, going now, but... Um, Coleman's got pace, likes to play away, likes to go on the outside. I think it's a good change. And I would be surprised if Gignac comes on very soon for Giroud as well. He's a bit more mobile, Gignac. The, uh, the French football supporters aren't frightened. Even though Didier Deschamps has brought them to the Euro yeah, 2016 yeah. final, they do not mind 
letting him know when they don't approve of his decisions as with the selection of Giroud the booing of Giroud in the, in the friendlies this season and indeed I know you were at the match in Marseille I was watching it here in Paris in a, in a bistro and um, when Gignac was brought on everyone in where, where I was watching was outraged here's Griezmann left side of the area shoots low but it was straight and goalkeeper Rui Patricio who was able to just pat it and kill it every single shot so far has been relatively comfortable apart from the header in the first half where Griezmann was really intelligent just trying to flick it over the top of Rui Patricio every single shot has gone straight at him he hasn't really been troubled a great deal and you just start to wonder as the game goes on stays like this you just think Portugal might just nick one at the other end it is nil-nil here in the Stade de France where France have never been beaten in tournament play this stadium that was built for France 98 here's Font at the back tall dark haired central defender to Adrian Silva who's dropped very deep there I think they're quite a good combination Adrian Silva William Carvalho and Joao Mario the three sporting players under their manager Georges Jesus here's Font at the back who will play it across to Rui Patricio a touch from him he's outside of his penalty area in front of his D gives it to Pepe of Real Madrid and Portugal this is part of the Fernando Santos game plan and no mistake just frustrating France and keeping possession deep inside their own territory it's not the uh, nicest to watch though is it and um, that's the way they've set up and this has gotten to the final but France for me have been on the front foot all night and they're uh, just lacking a little bit of quality as you keep saying but and Portugal this, you know they've got you've just said John you've been naming some players here. they're good players technically good as well why can't they go on the front foot a bit more and up the tempo and go in the other half and show the skills this is the way the manager wants them to play though uh, not getting the best out of them all. here's Coman first time into the action Kingsley Coman it turns nicely but then overhits the pass out of play Coman 20 years old just turned winning his 11th cap tonight long ball downfield Umtiti wins the header stretch from Adrian Silva but France back in possession with Evra Evra taking it on was caught by Renato Sanchez it's a free kick Mark Kattenberg very quick on the whistle there and that's, an, that's a couple of fouls by Renato Sanchez now in the game who will uh, Mark Clattenberg will have his number I think he's been excellent Clattenberg Mark Clattenberg I think he's had a really good game he's not been buying any of the little dives or little trips he's kept, carried the, kept, kept the playing going on and keep playing advantages and that's what you want to see as uh, the ball runs through to Rui Patricio yeah Mark Clattenberg the referee Simon Beck and Jake Collin the assistants and uh, and it's been a quiet night for them so far Portugal with the ball with Font who it's a long right footed pass into the last half hour of the 90 minutes now it's still nil on nil nil on five live and the world service the ball's played back to Lloris who looked a little uncomfortable there with Nani not far away from him so he just planted it straight out of play for a throw in but Joao Mario is going to leave for Rafael Guerrero to take already though John you can tell that Portugal are almost trying to wind down the clock even with half an hour to go it has that look of it doesn't it as uh, Guerrero loses possession Guerrero in the challenge again against Giroud who's handed off by Font now Caresma digs out a pass to the right hand side the space there for the right back Cedric and Cedric's crossed towards the penalty spot headed up and away by Pogba and it lands on the chest of Giroud on the edge of his own area and then he's tripped by Joao Mario it's a free kick to France and I'll be very surprised in fact Mark Clattenberg already had the yellow card out for Portugal's number 10 oh, he took one for the team there didn't he Giroud good bit of skill turn, took a little turn of pace and he's just took one getting caught maybe just short numbers at the back we're going to see the uh, very experienced Joao Moutinho coming on very shortly and uh, they're going to delay it first because the ball's back under play with France so Joao Moutinho you would think will take the place of one of those midfielders Adrian Silva yeah here is Umtiti carrying it forward gets the ball back now Griezmann with a touch very congested in there though Coleman 
Evra, well forward on the left-hand side. Patrice Evra takes it on to the dead ball line and wins the corner of Cedric. So a corner to France from the left wing this time. And we will see the change now, or will we? No, Mark Clattenburg is just waiting for the signal and because France have the corner. Yeah, no, they just said the no. The substitution won't be taking place just yet. Coach just said no, obviously. Always dangerous to make a change in a set piece. Of course, the volume again. In comes the corner. Headed away by Joao Mario. Then the shot from Coman. It's blocked on the edge of the penalty area. It finds its way back to Griezmann again on the left-hand side. Little dink by Griezmann for Giroud. But William Carvalho is quickly in to pass it away to the halfway line. And there was no one there in a red Portuguese shirt. They had everyone back defending. And... Uh, Eventually, it's Hugo Lloris who is back in possession. Le Le Bleu. I think the crowd know that the team need a little bit of help here. A long pass over the top for the run of Coman, but that will just bounce through to Rui Patricio at the other end. João Moutinho still waiting to come on. He plays his football in the French League. João Moutinho for Monaco. And uh, Font. Right-footed pass towards the halfway line but Sanya wins that in the air and now Pogba Sanya heads it forward but Funt ever so tight on Sissoko bounces out of play and I think we will see the change now no France take the throw quickly back to Pogba Pogba just waits and then back into central defence for Koscielny so France Nil-nil here. France attempting to become European champions for the third time, which would equal the, the record that is held jointly by Germany and Spain. Three times winners of the European Championship. And uh, now it's France comfortably in possession. Barely had a chance in the second half. The Griezmann tame shot from the angle was about it. Coman, though, plays it through. Now Matuidi. Matuidi to the left-hand side. Evra hangs over the cross. It's beyond Griezmann. It's reached the right-hand side, and Sanya. Now Sissoko takes possession. Sissoko, little ball down the line to Sanya. Sanya has space here, but the cross is headed away by William Carvalho, headed further away by Nani. Again, Portugal have got everyone back in their own defensive third. 25 minutes of the 90 to play. It has the look of extra time about it, but a goal will change all that. Here's Coleman again on the left flank. Coleman on his right foot. Angles the ball in, Griezmann with a header and he's headed it over the crossbar from six yards out and he puts his hands on his head and it was there for him, his seventh goal of the tournament was inviting to be headed into the net Fabulous ball into the box and he just mistimes it, he almost jumps a little bit too early and heads it as he's sort of coming down off the top of his jump, not quite sure in such great form just got his time in a fraction out and just glanced it what probably a foot over the crossbar huge let off for Portugal and now we will see Moutinho come onto the field and it is the, the French born Adrian Silva who actually lived the first 12 years of his life in France knows all the words to the national anthem but playing for Portugal against France in the final and that's it for him and Moutinho is on with all of his experience around Moutinho 29 years old just trotting across there as he wins his 90th cap for Portugal Chris Waddle I just come back that chance I was talking about there that, that's the sort of chance where you, you win the game you're not going to get a lot of chances the way that Portugal's defended tonight in vast numbers so when you get that chance you've got to take it and it really felt to the man you probably want to take it Griezmann this time over the bar Portugal nil France nil five live and the world service bringing you this match live from Paris in Saint-Denis, north of the city centre where it's been a glorious day tourists everywhere in Paris today so many boats on the Seine here's Griezmann pulls the ball down, gives it square to Coman. Coman shooting from 25 yards but well wide, well wide you know, probably 25 probably yards, corner flag. I think it's 25 yeah. yards wide as well wasn't it so it's a goal kick to, uh, to Portugal and to Rui Patricio so the midway point of the second half approaching it is nil-nil and here to describe the remainder of the normal time is Alan Green well we have had upsets in the European Championship I was alongside Mike Ingham in Stockholm in 1992 when 
what they said was Denmark came off the beaches to win uh, dramatically in the final against Germany and then in 2004 when Portugal suffered defeat in Lisbon at the hands of Greece if anything the Greek triumph was even more surprising than that of Denmark the longer this game goes on you do think that at some stage Portugal are going to get a chance here's Font we've got 22 minutes left for play of the 90 before we have to enter extra time barring one of these teams actually scoring Sanchez a reminder that Ronaldo had to go off after 25 minutes injured he actually was injured in the 16th minute but it took 9 minutes to make a, a firm decision Charisma crosses on the right it punches inside the 6 yard box of the French penalty area and then that's a push uh, by João Murillo on Sanya and it's a free kick to France I just think the tempo is slightly dropping it's a very warm evening I think Gignac's got a little bit more mobility a little bit more pace but and the get, crowd roared when they saw Gignac yeah but get the tempo like back up you know yes. you, you need to keep the tempo if you want to win this football match presumably Danny it means Gignac for Giroud yeah no other change uh, he's been warming up for some time though you know a little bit surprised doesn't look an awful lot of movement on the bench he's still out there stretching off got to be careful he'll be worn out before he comes on it's a push by Font on Giroud it's a free kick to France uh, about 8 yards in from the right touch line 20 yards over the halfway line Sanya the right back uh, was shaping to take it now he leaves it to Griezmann and Mtete and Koscielny come up to join Giroud and Pogba around the edge of the Portuguese penalty area Griezmann takes a free kick left footed swirling in a glancing header on by Mtete but he didn't find another blue shirt inside the penalty area and it's cleared by Portugal up to the halfway line when it's met by Evra Evra tips it forward Koscielny jumps this time the jump and it's bouncing out of play it's going to be a throw into Portugal 20 minutes to go no well, well I was here in the opening game where Pyatt dug them out of a hole clearly it's not going to be him this evening but it looks like it's going to have to be something like that Ruben show hasn't had an awful lot to do in the second half a couple of saves but saves that you expect him to make at the other end Maurice has had pretty much nothing to do at all but you just start to think the longer it goes on the more and more France are going to get nervous maybe a little bit panicky and a little bit desperate and almost try too hard maybe Sanchez flicks the ball towards this near side where it's met by the left back Guerrero who's over the halfway line now Mario is ahead of him Guerrero looks back to William Carvalho and now it's with Font Font just inside the D a little pass to the far side and uh, Cedric Suarez and he cuts in field looking for Nani finds Nani takes the return pass and here's Matinho and called for the first time the Portuguese substitute Mourinho halfway inside the French half to Guerrero Guerrero on to Caresma and then Caresma's pass well it was intended for Guerrero Guerrero uh, turned to the referee as if I was bought there I was stopped the referee was having none of it well, to goal kick I think they've got some good technical players in Portugal but once they get over that half wheeling they're very negative they don't want to commit bodies forward nobody really runs off the ball makes runs nobody's running with the ball it's all back square and I'm surprised it's normally Portugal are very very good technical technical team well Portugal would be entering extra time for the third time in this European Championship extra time against Croatia uh, extra time against Poland that led to a penalty shootout but here uh, Coleman on to Giroud Coleman again into the penalty area goodness that was an important challenge that wasn't made by Font if he dived into the tackle then it would have been a penalty as it is they've got a corner France Font did really well it looked like he was going to dive I thought he was going to dive and in. slide and maybe bring Coleman down but he sort of half pulled out and it just did enough to put Coleman off who had an extra touch and just sent himself that little bit wider 18 minutes to go Griezmann from the right plays the corner in, and goodness that went an awfully long way but no French foot was on the end of it and away come Portugal Caresma to Sanchez there's no one through the middle Caresma's there and oh brilliant work by Suzuko just shrugging off Sanchez what a game Suzuko's had no, he's yeah. called by Nani and he gets a free kick. Yeah, he's been excellent to Sol Connie. 
up and down the park, driving at players, taking players on. Really, I'm sure this is the same to Zoko. Well, I know, <laughs> I know what Newcastle <laughs> fans will be watching thinking, no, it's not, it's his brother. <laughs> but uh, he's been excellent tonight. From the free kick, Umtiti for France to Griezmann. Well, there ain't long left now. Under 18 minutes of the 90. I have to keep saying the 90 because um, the way things are going, I'm expecting extra time. Umtiti uh, to the far side. Takes the return ball from Matuidi. Now it's Kishelny moving inside the Portuguese half. Uh, playing it into the centre circle to Matuidi again. Onto the far side. And Pogba. Now Giroud. Giroud touched didn't find a, a French colleague but France have it back it's with Pogba on to Evra on the far side of the field Evra 28 minutes played in the second half still nil nil Coleman the French substitute to the left of the penalty that's the Portuguese penalty faced by two defenders plays it back to Evra who sweeps across in Giroud well I think he was intending just to head the ball back to a colleague didn't find a colleague and it's cleared by Portugal up into the French half Koscielny Koscielny being directed by Titi to give the ball to Matuidi and now it's with Sanya and the French crowd desperately trying to lift their team the Portuguese fans are responding well though Koscielny heads it on to Griezmann and Griezmann who had a great opportunity with the header just a, a few minutes ago that I thought when he rose goal probably European Championship winner not so, it's still nil-nil. Here's Koeman, and Koeman turns away from one marker. Beats a second, he's still in the penalty. And it's Giroud! Giroud shot, brilliant save by Patricio. No offside flag either. Thought Giroud scored. Here's Guerrero. Guerrero into Matinho. Matinho plays it to the left side. Caresma controls it brilliantly. He's got Nani to his right. Three French defenders back. Murillo. Murillo. Sanchez coming off in support. Caresma's in towards the edge of the penalty area. It slows down by Portugal. Sanchez into Matinho. Matinho now to Nani. Nani surrounded by blue shirts. Feeds it to the right. It's with uh, Cedric Suarez and his attempt to cross is blocked by Matuidi in the title play. Oh, Giroud just going back. What an opportunity. That's what I'm saying. You've got to take them. You're not going to get a lot tonight. The way Portugal have defended. Coleman did ever so well. Lost his balance, fell to the ground. Still got up, got the ball. Lovely ball, Giroud. I know he can say just hit the target. Toss of a coin. Who's man of the match? Uh, Patricio, Portuguese goalkeeper, or Suzuko, French midfield. I think that'll be the last action for yeah, Giroud. Yeah, well. Giroud. is ready to come on. We're inside the final quarter of an hour of the regular 90 minutes. Font for Portugal. To the near side, and Guerrero. That's the Portuguese left. On to João Maria and to Sanchez. And Sanchez back to Font. And they're not going to take any risks. And they're not under any pressure. They're going to just keep stroking the ball amongst themselves, the Portuguese. They're going to make a change as well. Eder is going to come on. Not yet. Here's Guerrero up the left-hand side. Guerrero cuts inside the challenge. There's the cross into the penalty chair. And Teddy with a header clear. Important header away by the central defender. And now it's Matuidi who runs it away towards the far side of the field. Suddenly the game's opening up. Maybe they don't actually fancy extra time. Not far to go before we have extra time. 14 minutes. Eder and Gignac will join the fray very shortly. France nil, Portugal nil. Here on five live of the World Service and the BBC. Coleman on the far side of the field. He's made quite a decent impact since he's come on. Takes on the fullback into the penalty. Pulls it back. Here's Griezmann. Oh, was taken off his boot by Giroud. Why did Giroud touch the ball? He had his back to goal, Chris. I don't know if he shouted uh, Griezmann. If he screams for it, Giroud will leave it. I don't think he said anything. He couldn't have. Koscielny. To Titi. And to Evra on the far side of the field. Coleman's available. Give it to Coleman. And he has done Evra. Coleman crosses. That looked like a handball by Nanny. But uh, Mark Clattenburg nearby says no. He just blocked it. And it's out of play for a throw. And now we're going to have the changes. First of all, Gignac for Giroud. And let's say I think that's quite popular amongst the French fans. So they are applauding Giroud. 
Yeah. He's always puts a shift in. Oh, he's, he's a grafter, he's honest, isn't he? Just lacks a little bit of quality at times and makes bad decisions, I suppose. And Edda replaces Sanchez. Well, he's impressed during the tournament, Sanchez, but I'm not sure he's had the best of finals. No, I think we saw, again, moments, what, what, what he's capable little of. Little moments. Yes. I don't think he's very happy to be substituted. Uh, he's taken a long while to walk off. I think Mark Clattenberg will be uh, blowing his whistle and saying, get on with it, son. He is only 18 years of age. He is the future for Portugal. Unfortunately for them, we may not see much of Cristiano Ronaldo internationally in the years to come. We'll certainly see some of Sanchez. It's a pat on the head and a pat on the backside from Fernando Santos. Well, that'll put Nani back out to the wing. Well, Eder has gone across there. Um, but he'll play in a forward role. France have a throw in just outside the Portuguese penalty area. Now the ball's inside the box. Uh, no room for a shot yet. It's played back to Matuidi. Matuidi feeds it wide to the left side and Evra. Evra onto his left foot. Swirls the cross in. Patricio Kane then changes by. But finally it comes off a, a French body and it's behind for a goal kick. France just running out of one or two ideas in that final third. A little bit of quality. Sizoko didn't expect it to come all the way to him and just caught him on the knee and went out of play and yeah, we said earlier as it, as it goes on 11 minutes of normal time remaining well, you just feel that there might be one big chance for Portugal against all the odds well they made all three possible changes Portugal remember the most important of them was forced on them in the first half and Ronaldo went off injured no Nani crosses from the right and goodness gracious Maurice almost makes a hatch of it then the overhead kick by Kavisma save uh, well he only just, Nani's just mentioned one good chance I mean that was a cross comes in from Nani he's missed it slightly Maurice has to backpedal it and he tries to tip it away and then the overhead kick from Kavisma yeah, he catches that one here's Eder Eder goes down free kick Portugal inside the centre circle encouragement for Portugal 10 minutes left to play and there's a yellow card for Antetti just seeing that overhead kicking I'm not quite sure why Lloris he tries to almost scoop it away and keep it in play the first uh, the first one the cross from Nani should probably just tip that over the bar shouldn't he you know he scoops it out well he put it back in the danger yeah, area he's a little bit fortunate that the overhead kick was straight at him from the free kick Portugal's Guerrero the left back has it infield it goes and on to Karezma and Karezma slaps it back into his own half Patricio is going to come out of his penalty here to get it and now he plays it forward to William Carvalho and Font of Southampton Font the left sided of the two central defenders is up and over the halfway line on to Guerrero the fullback Guerrero is Eder in field he's got Karezma wide so Karezma's on the left side Nani's on the right and Eder's through the middle and Portugal are looking for the one chance that might win them the European Championship Nani has the ball now Nani onto Matinho Matinho plays it back to João Murillo onto Matinho once more left for Nani Nani should but that was always high and wide and it's a goal kick well this is the problem when you're on top as France have been for so much of the game and you don't manage to carve out that opportunity and score you're always likely to be caught with a soccer punch nine minutes plus whatever time will be added on remains of the regular 90 minutes here's Antiti to Koscielny France nil, Portugal nil and five live in the world service on the BBC Danny Mills and Chris Swaddle alongside me back with Koscielny Antiti once more still inside his own half France are a little sluggish in the movement at the moment there was a foul on Antiti again excellent refereeing for Mark Lattenberg played the advantage now Griezmann hits it on towards Sissoko cleared by Font it bounces towards the far touchline still in play courtesy of Evra Evra in to Pogba and Pogba drills it down the left side the chase after it now that's kept in play by Evra oh has he won a corner? no he hasn't it's a goal kick tried to block Mark Rattenberg great Martin ball not for the block great ball by Pogba he likes that diagonal one doesn't he and uh, that one reached Evra but Ideally, you want someone like Coleman to be picking the ball up in the final third rather than the fullback all the time. Coleman comes inside, sometimes he's better off just staying out wide 
he got the beating of the full back every time he's had it but Andrew Santos has got his head in his hands at the moment I don't know why well I just think so far this game what have we got with eight minutes left has pretty much lived up to how the tournament has gone yeah. promised so much in one or two moments but really it hasn't really delivered as a great game is it no. I, I think the championship as a whole as you say Danny they're thrown on the far side uh, oh, to, well. to France or is it a foul Give a free kick it's a free kick which is tapped back by Matuidi to Everett and in the field it goes to Pogba Pogba's been quiet tonight Pogba to Koscielny almost put Koscielny in trouble there Koscielny reacted quickly finds Umtiti with the pass and Umtiti has made 40 yards of a run plays it with Sissoko shoots from 25 yards break save pushed away by Patricio ball still inside the penalty here. cross in there header down by Sissoko once more Sissoko very close to scoring the winning goal Sissoko has been outstanding um, he's just gone down on the edge of the box Mark Clattenburg just checking that he's OK it's a shot from distance struck it really well but it's probably 25 plus yards out it's a good save but it's a save you'd expect the goalkeeper to make from that diff if he lets that in you'd be asking all sorts of questions but it's you know involved the two best players on the pitch Patricio the goalkeeper and yeah, Suzuko it has the Suzuko, yeah, every time he's got it very positive again driving forward it's time he saves to shoot and it's a very good save comfortable save I was done he said well I hope hopefully that's just a precaution yes the stretcher came on but Suzuko bounced to his feet now he will continue fabulous game for him as I said in the first half Chris you know <laughs> he'll draw attention to himself for his performances for France out here but if he's sold by Newcastle he'll get a big fee for him no question about that I'm sure Rafa Benitez would want to hold on to him say to the player you be my fulcrum for the season in the championship take us back up to the Premier League Suzuka having received treatment has to come off momentarily a little over five minutes to go here and five live in the World Service on the BBC there was no foul on Suzuka just a bounce ball that was allowed to be bounced to Patricia who finds Bont and now Pepe Pepe just chips it down the right flank towards Nani and Nani controlled it really well gets it back to Cedric Suarez played to Eder Eder uh, plays it to Juan Murillo he can't control it and it's taken away by France Suzuko back to Koscielny Koscielny feeds it to Gignac down the right side Gignac was strong enough to hold off on Gignac now running infield towards the penalty area he's still running he's on his left foot it was a weak shot easily blocked by a Portuguese body but France pick up the rebound it's with Sanya Sanya now Suzuko nearby Suzuko offers an option but it's played back to Matuidi and back to Koscielny inside the last five minutes here's Pogba Pogba to Matuidi inside right channel for France on to Sanya it's down to walking face again Matuidi to Pogba Pogba with movement ahead of him notably it's man Coman takes it up doesn't control it properly though Portugal have it again they can counter-attack Eder oh, well Eder was fouled there and I think that was an important foul for France to make because otherwise Eder might have fed the ball to the right side to Nani the free kick's taken by Portugal it's on the far side it's with Cedric Suarez the right fullback and uh, they move in field and it, here's a good uh, move involving Eder and Nani and then it breaks down and France come forward again Fernando Santos is furious he wants his players to get back as Sissoko breaks forward but his pass in the direction of Griezmann overhead and it rushes through to Patricio he's exciting now isn't he he picks the ball up Sissoko every time he picks it up he just starts driving whoever's in front of him he goes past him and he, he just got past the way the pass just let it down there you look at the squad list at the start of the championship and I didn't even think Sissoko would figure no what, what a great final he's had only Patricio could rival him as man of the match the Portuguese goalkeeper now that's loose from Coleman he hits the pass behind Evra and it's out for a Portuguese throw in inside the final three minutes inside the Stade de France the singing is coming from the Portuguese fans away the far left hand corner they must have thought when Ronaldo went off after uh, 25 minutes bang 
there go our hopes. Not they've, so. They've not really missed him. No, they have. Honesty. You know, for the games that we've seen, and we've done a couple yes. of their games together, Alan. You know, he wasn't outstanding. I know he got a couple of goals against uh, Hungary. I think it was. But he hasn't done anything really apart from that outside of those two goals that he scored in those games. And I just think they are. They're better balanced. They're solid. They're happy to sit in and defend it. And they will, they'll play like this for another 30 plus minutes if they have to. And quite happily, they will go to penalties. Here's Font playing the ball to Pepe. And Pepe unruffled. Nobody's challenging him inside his own half. Finds Joao Mario over the half play line to Guerrero. Guerrero onto Caresma. Caresma took that rather awkwardly, uh, but rushed after it into the penalty area didn't keep it in play and it's behind for a goal kick and we're inside the final two minutes plus whatever time that we added on I'm surprised there were only two minutes added on at the end of the first half and then they weren't added on substantially because there was an injury for the first minute and a quarter and Mark Clattenburg blew a minute later so it's, there's it's got to be at least three or four minutes well here. it's normally a standard three that goes off isn't it at the end of the game unless something dramatic has happened Koscielny to the right side and Sanya Sanya to Suzoko back to Sanya uh, Shinya can make a run down the right but he was ignored by the Manchester City right back and it goes to the far side of the field it's with Matuidi Evers further along that left touch line first it goes to Coleman back to Ntiti and now Pogba on the halfway line right in the centre circle to Suzoko is there a late goal there have been so many of them here in France Griezmann back to Suzoko right to the right side and Sanya Sanya's first touch wasn't great oh the pass then was missed by Suzoko but he gets the ball back from Pogba Suzoko inside right channel to Sanya Sanya crosses in dangerous ball in one bounce caught by Patricio That's great great, yeah, great ball sorry great yeah. ball in but great defending from Pepe he saw Geniak trying to get across him and he just nudged him out of the way just gave him that little nudge with his shoulder just to make sure that he couldn't get the ball and Patricio picked up the loose bouncer fourth official is 20 seconds away from telling us how much time will be added on at the end of the 90 minutes it's been a very warm evening in Paris the game mostly played with the temperature in the 80s and it still hasn't produced a goal Coleman tackled on the far side of the field here comes the fourth official one eye on him three minutes well forecast Danny Portugal on the counter attack now Nani tackled by Koscielny ball breaks to Suzoko Suzoko on to Griezmann Griezmann now in the centre circle now he's ahead of it and looking for Zinyak oh Zinyak far too elaborate with his touch could have been a simple pass to Suzoko it wasn't and it's back with Patricio the Portuguese goalkeeper who clears it left footed temporarily into the French half headed back by Koscielny Suzoko on this near side of the field strong holds off the challenge of Guerrero feeds it infield to Pogba is he really worth 100 million can't believe that now the far side of the field it's on by Evra to Koeman Koeman back to Matuidi Matuidi has to look backwards though finds him Tete and we've only got two minutes of out of time remaining before we head to extra time Suzoko to Koscielny who's on the halfway line there's no great movement upfield from France Chignac is static and Sanya static on the right side Evra static on the left side here's Matuidi on it goes to Evra Evra keeps the ball in play crosses into the penalty Chignac there back to goal oh there is right foot hits the post hits the post with Patricio beaten ball still inside the penalty area Griezmann tries to cross it and it's cleared by William Carvalho to safety out of play unbelievable chance Chignac does incredibly well it's a glorious little Cruyff turn cuts back inside and how he's not scored I do not know Patricio beaten for the first time in the night we've still got a minute and ten seconds of out of time remaining France nil Portugal nil what an opportunity for Zignac Koscielny to Pogba in the centre circle back to Titi time for one last chance ball fed forward to Coleman Coleman to the left side and Evra Evra on to Zignac who's offside and that was careless of him and it's a relieving free kick for Portugal three quarters of a minute from extra time 
will want to waste as much time as they can. They'll oh, sound no, just saw that chance again. Gina, brilliant turn, puts Pepe on the ground, beats the keeper, hits the inside of the post and comes away. Great and he was unlucky, he could have come off the inside of the post and into the net. He didn't strike it as well as he wanted, now he scuffs it and hits the post. Patricio being booed by the French fans because he's taken an age. If it had been Lloris, well, it had been the same thing, same tactic. Portugal's got a throw in though on the far side of the field, deep inside the French half. Maybe they're going to get a dramatic final chance. João Murillo into Matinho. Matinho stabs it towards Eder, but behind Eder it goes through to Lloris, and that is the final whistle, and we have extra time here at the Stade de France. It's finished after the regular 90 minutes. France nil, Portugal nil. Energy boost, Mark. Uh, so nil nil, Portugal nil, France nil. No European Championship final has ever ended nil nil. There's only ever been one penalty shootout in the final. The famous Czechoslovakia West Germany, when Antonin Panenka scored the winning penalty and has never been forgotten. We could have both a nil nil draw and another penalty shootout here in Paris tonight. And France get extra time underway, playing from right to left as we look now. France still have that one change they can make, having brought on Coleman and Gignac for Giroud and Payet. Uh, and France with the ball inside their own half. And again, the, the crowd, the French supporters, try to get behind their team with the Allé Le Bleu chant. And uh, Umtiti plays it forward towards Gignac, but it just runs past him and through to Rui Patricio. Certainly France have done more to win it. If you uh, haven't been listening, the uh, chance right at the end for Gignac a wonderful turn at the near post but he shot, hit the inside of the post and stayed out so Portugal nil, France nil Griezmann had a very good chance with a header early on in the game that was saved by Rui Patricio but Portugal have created very little really here is Nani who's taken over the captaincy from Cristiano Ronaldo who had to go off injured with a knee problem in the 26th minute a challenge from Payet and uh, here is Bakary Sanya at right back and then Koscielny going all the way back to Ugo Lloris so this is five live on the world service from the BBC Chris Waddle and Danny Mills with us for the commentary here in the Stade de France and you can listen to our commentary synced up with the pictures on television as well if you're travelling home late uh, via the red button as long as you've got satellite cable or connected television here is uh, Sissoko infield towards Griezmann Griezmann just a little touch out to the right hand side comes back centrally towards Matuidi who's quite quiet in that second half Matuidi now Evra on the left hand side Evra with the outside of his boot rolls it up towards Gignac Gignac tall and strong back to Coman Coman of Bayern Munich currently then Pogba with a pass that wasn't the easiest for Sanya to deal with but he has managed to do that and French possession almost from the start and we've had we're in the third minute of extra time now but now Portugal have got it back in their red shirts red shorts and green socks and Nani pass into the centre circle to Koresma the experienced Koresma has just won the Turkish title with Besiktas now Nani back to the halfway line uh, João Mario has come short but Moutinho just putting his foot on the ball and Moutinho rolls it back and um Already it has the look of the penalty is inevitable. inevitable. This is what we thought would be. Sorry, Chappers. Looks like I was right. But, but ultimately, no one wants to lose it. Teams are starting to get fatigued. Concentration starts to wane and get tired. You know, and they're both quite happy to sit back and they'll just wait for somebody to make a mistake. No one's you never get the impression extra time that someone's going to just really go for it and try and put the opposition under a great deal of pressure so nil nil it is the famous semi-final between these countries at, uh, at Euro 84 the last time France hosted the European Championship it also went to extra time between them in the semi-final at Euro 2000 when the golden goal was in operation and Zidane scored it with a penalty long ball forward 
headed away by French towards Nani, who's trying to get the bouncing ball down. Matidi in with the challenge. Now it's up to Adair, who was manhandled over by Umtiti, who is on a yellow card. I don't think there's any danger of a second yellow for that, but it's a free kick and a good position for Portugal. Well, yeah, to get the centre halves up, I think we're looking to bend this in. Will it be a left footer? Turn it in towards the goal, far post, but it uh, doesn't look like it's going no, to be a right footer. Yeah, Quaresma has come across. So there'll be a two-man wall put up by France. Portugal nil, France nil, first period of extra time. João Mario leaves it. Quaresma with the delivery. It's good delivery as well, and it's headed goalwards, but wide. Pepe got his head to it. In fact, the offside flag was up against the Portuguese, and if it had found the net, it wouldn't have counted big chance for Portugal just Pepe just goes a fraction early gets himself half a yard in front Ronaldo off the bench thought it had gone in but even if it had done correct decision was given it was offside and then I said there won't be many chances in extra time it's just whenever they fall as I said tiredness kick it in can that person whoever it falls to just keep their composure uh, Challenge on the far side, Mark Guerrero oh, yeah. has yellow carded Guerrero, the left back. Uh, and it is free kick to France, which is taken quickly. So France have it once again with Matuidi. Portugal nil, France nil in the Euro 2016 final. Now Evra on the left hand side. Evra challenged by Nani. Out of play, throwing to the hosts. And it's taken by Evra towards Matuidi. And back to Umtiti. And France with Koscielny. Great noise behind France from the, the home supporters in the in the stadium here. Matuidi with a cross, but that's easily cleared away. Hooked away by the right boot of William Carvalho. And it bounces out of play near the halfway line. Throwing is taken from probably 15 yards away from where it should be. Fernando Santos, who's made all his changes, the Portuguese coach, who did so well as the coach of Greece before this long time in club football in Greece too took them into the knockout stages of both the European Championship and the World Cup they had no frills about them either I seem to remember his Greek team nil-nil now it's Coleman back to Umtiti again Umtiti looks to his right but plays it to his left Fernando Santos puts his head in his hands again He's wanting to go and press when they're passing it back and square. He wants them to come up 10 yards and press the ball a bit higher, but uh, he's, he's doing it again. He's retired, John. McTweedy to Gignac on the edge of the penalty area. Adair jumps for it. Wins it for Portugal. But Oh, Pepe's there. Look, get your card out. And, and out comes the card. Oh, no. For McTweedy for his challenge on... Uh, and Pepe was straight on the scene there as he came in with a challenge on Adair so Matuidi, the latest player to be yellow carded by Mark Clattenburg how many yellows is that? No. three four two each yeah Matuidi actually doesn't do anything wrong it, it just stops you know Adair he jumps over the top of him rolls over him and lands awkwardly three for Portugal and two for France it is yellow cards from Mark Clattenburg so it's not quite Chelsea against Tottenham Portugal nil, France nil. And uh, Evra just gets a touch on that ahead of Nani, so it's a throw in five or six yards back from the corner flag, just down to our right here. Cedric takes the throw. He is one of the Portugal players who've been booked. Now João Mario back towards Pepe finds Cedric but there are two French players there and it's Coleman who comes away with the ball and Kingsley Coleman now away from those two players running deep and across comes William Carvalho who takes out Kingsley Coleman 10 yards inside the Portuguese half and that's another yellow card well, he's got to take him out he's took one for the team there he was on a run Colm very fit obviously come on as a sub a lot of energy a lot of pace he just takes him out free kick then for France Gignac and Griezmann and the only players who are up there on the edge of the penalty area and, and Pogba actually leaves it and says to Griezmann well, you come and take the set piece and then Koscielny and Umtiti come forward but they take it short the two central defenders are up there but Portugal have got everyone back anyway Coman now again Fernando Santos is absolutely furious 
he's got the look of what did I tell you to do at the end of 90 minutes and you're not doing it here's Adair gives it away with a slide on the halfway line very nearly took down Matuidi as well Kingsley Coma Coma in field but that doesn't find Matuidi and Portugal have got it back and obviously Portugal in possession go backwards nil nil Pepe up towards Adair who had that miserable spell at Swansea now playing in France for Lille he signed for them permanently Adair forward from Evra Gignac gets away from Pepe into the full back position Font is out there with him Gignac plays it into Font who can't keep it in it's a corner to France from the left hand side Chris Waddle well, we've not seen a lot of that Gignac looks actually spinning the centre halves and they've been quite happy tonight they've played deep they've kept the strikers in front and this time he gets down the side works a corner if you just switched on Euro 2016's final is into extra time we've got just over five minutes of the first period left and we're still waiting for the first goal but France have a corner Griezmann waiting to take it there's lots of wrestling going on Griezmann plays it across it's headed away to the edge of the area and headed further away by Joao Mario for Portugal header from Matuidi sends it forward Matuidi again with the ball at his feet and Matuidi finds a pass to Griezmann and Griezmann controls it and Griezmann pulls it back Pepe got a touch still inside the penalty area but on the left hand side with Griezmann who crosses left footed that's gone a long way Pogba keeps it in in the opposite full back area Pogba puts his foot on the ball there's a little shimmy from him still going Pogba twisting one way and the other against Guerrero Pogba still against Guerrero and in the end he tries to win a corner off him and he succeeded corner to France from the right this time got fabulous feet hasn't he I mean almost as good as Ronaldo the way he's rolling the ball between his feet under his sole bamboozling the defender at times and then just plays it off him but again another opportunity for France to put a dangerous ball into the box Griezmann here it is swinging in left footed but it's over everyone he's overhit it and it's bounced harmlessly away from Kingsley Coman and out of play next to the corner waste. flag what a waste the champ's not happy neither look he's going mad in the dugouts you know you are a bit tired take a little bit off it just put it in the area you never know what happens he's just put too much on that four minutes of the first period of extra time to go on this warm evening in Paris Cedric's clearance was charged down by Coman gets a second chance to head it away Evrado tries to find Gignac with the header Font came across and lifted it away towards the halfway line. France have got it again, but only at the back with Umtiti, so still nil-nil. The closest we've come to a goal, the shot from substitute Gignac that hit the inside of the post. But here they come with a cross from the right-hand side that Gignac is stretching for, but in attempting to pull it down, purely miscontrolled it behind for a goal kick oh, France still on the front foot just looking at a bit of quality Gignac tries to pull one out difficult bit of skill comes off his foot just goes out of play a lot of tired legs out there now so a goal kick to Portugal Portugal who were once considered footballing minnows had never qualified for a tournament until the World Cup of 66 and then did great things there Eusebio's team reached the semi-final and now really regular contenders but never winners of the major international tournament here's Juan Moutinho long and left footed from him Evra hooks it away doesn't put it out of play the tall Adair wins it Nani then wins a corner off Kingsley Coman just bounced off it and this could be a chance for Portugal set pieces Portugal all coming up the centre halves well it would break a few hearts if Portugal were to score a goal now because there'd be every chance it would win them the trophy Quaresma is going to take this corner from the right hand side Pepe is up there Adair as well so there's lots of height in fact Pepe has just shoved over Umtiti who's remained lying on the ground on his back Pepe who's not been yellow carded yet in the game and, and referee Clattenburg will speak to Pepe who just pushed him in the chest and shoved him over Mark Clattenburg gives them a, an indication that there must be no more of that sort of behaviour any opportunity Mark Clattenburg will give a free kick to France here well there are plenty of opportunities 
Perezma takes it though, deeply headed down by Eder, blocked by Lloris on the line. He sort of patted it away, it didn't have great pace, and Nani couldn't get his foot to it in the six yard box, and France are away on the counter attack. Griezmann, his pass to Coleman, is, is well dealt with by Joao Mario, and it's back to. Uh, it's, everything's calmed down again, still nil nil. Uh, so, please again, good header, good save. Just get it away. They are very vulnerable, France, on corners and free kicks, balls coming into the box. That was Eder's chance. In fact, is that as good a chance as Portugal have had? It is. Nil nil. Ronaldo had to limp off injured. In fact, he was stretched off in the uh, first half. Nani with a cross from the right, but that's beyond everyone and bounces out of play for a throw in. We're in the last minute of the first period of extra time here in the Stade de France. It's going to be a late night. We're an hour ahead of UK time. But still, brilliant atmosphere, which it has been throughout the course of the game here tonight. Even though the, the match, in the main, has far from lived up to expectations. Here is Umtiti at the back. I'm not sure we'll have any time added on at the end of the, the 15 minutes. Penalties looks a very good prospect. Umtiti. And now Pogba. But it, the ball is won back by Portugal, but Ed Air had no intention of going forward there. William Carvalho in the centre circle. Now João Moutinho. Nani, a little short with the pass, and there is the half time whistle in extra time. Really just that one glimmer of a chance from the header from Ed Air from the corner that was pushed away by Hugo Lloris. So 15 minutes to go in extra time and then it would be penalties to decide who is the winner of Euro 2016 but it is still Portugal nil, France nil and Mark Chapman is here with us in the start of France Well unfortunately for Portugal Ronaldo can't do what he did in the Champions League final in Milan when he took the critical penalty for Real Madrid and meant that Real once more were European champions his Portuguese colleagues will have to do without their captain if we go to a shootout. It'll be Portugal who'll get their second period of extra time underway. Normally it's very cautious, but I've seen so many of them, and there's usually one decent chance. Usually one big chance. Portugal try to get under the attack. That foot was a little high on the team. Yeah, the Pepe, rolls over. Pepe's running forward. Matuidi. Uh, who's got a yellow card he was the man who was guilty uh, I don't think that uh, Mark Trattenberg will see that as anything other than accidental though of course Pepe wants to take it to the high court well he does because that, that, you know, that's a red card um, you know, if he gives him another yellow he's got to go between he's already on a booking well he pulled out of it oh, he, he, did, out. he did he pulled out no. it's, it's not but you know Pepe ran as Chris said 40-50 yards he's still got some energy left at least Set free kick so to Portugal uh, Jean Murillo will take it from the right side played in very deep into the penalty here and fought Rose but he never got his head on the ball and it's actually gone out of play for a throw in to France near side of the field deep inside their own half so Sanya will take it will they be cautious both teams certainly if Portugal get a set piece They'll have a go and they'll be threatening. Griezmann missed two headers tonight. And then that Ginya effort off the inside of the post. Portugal on the attack. Peels for handball and the free kick's given by Mark Lattenberg. So this is in a really good position and it's a yellow card for Koscielny. Just look at Charisma. He's absolutely desperate. Even when Ronaldo's on the pitch, he's desperate to get hold of the ball and take a free kick. And he never, ever gets his chance oh, suddenly God. now think of all the loose free kicks that Ronaldo's taken never got any of them really threatening a goal by the way he didn't even have balls it's, it's it, did. it did and balls it because he only never even touched the ball if, never he scores here, if he scores here oh oh dear Mark Lattenberg could be oh dear yeah wow it is a free kick to Portugal that's about four yards from the D, slightly to the left as Portugal look at it. Charisma's right foot is going to deliver it. No, it's not. It's a free kick, Ben, and it's a crossbar. 
Brilliant free kick. Guerrero. Guerrero. Oh, what a strike for the left fullback. Hands on his head now. He knows he was so close to a winning goal. Mark Clattenburg breathes a huge sigh of relief. I'm sure he's heard word in his ear that it wasn't handball. I don't, I don't know. Would Luis have got to it? It was close, it was wasn't there, it? wasn't it? Yeah, maybe he would have, but uh, good effort. Just wonder why he's not took any free kicks in the tournament. I wonder why. Because <laughs> Ronaldo's taken 45 in competitions S and never scored. wearing a number seven shirt all the time. Opportunity for Portugal. Not quite taken. 12 minutes of extra time remaining. Still France nil, Portugal nil. Here on 5 by the World Service on the BBC. But Portugal have had a chance. And here comes the last change uh, for France. And it's Conte who'll be coming on. That's a bit of a surprise. But here's Eder. Eder shit! What a goal! What a strike from 25 yards! It's slipped low past the despairing right hand of Lloris. And Portugal celebrate what could be a winning goal. What a smash from Eder! France nil, Portugal won. Oh, I've got to say, what a fantastic strike. When he starts running across with the ball, you think, is he going to pull the trigger? I don't think Lloris thought he was neither. He hits it nice and early. Lloris can't really get off his lane and get an angle. Normally he would be on the six-yard line, but he smashes it into the bottom corner. What a finish. What a finish. Great, great goal of which Ronaldo would have been proud. And Deschamps changes his mind. It's no Conte coming on. Instead... We're going to have Anthony Marshall. Well, I'll tell you what Eder does really well. He bullies Koscielny out of it in the first place. He turns, he shrugs him off, doesn't give him a chance, just knocks him aside. And then from, from range, fabulous strike. Absolute magnificent hit right into the corner. And now, well, we right. to right up against it. Right. Marshall has come on uh, for Suzuko, who's been France's best player. But it means that Marshall goes to the left flank and this man Coleman takes up a position on the right side and France have got 10 minutes 10 minutes to score to avoid losing the European Championship on home soil is this a repeat in a way of 92 with Denmark 2004 with Greece when it was Portugal who suffered Portugal lead 1-0 and we know that Portugal will now defend stoutly They'll defend, yes, and uh, they'll waste time. They'll run the clock down as much as they can. It was, it was a great goal. It was a great, really great nice goal. Nice and early, you know, good strength, Danny said there, but uh, lovely hit early. Normally your goalie's on the six-yard line getting an angle on it. He couldn't, he was like, stuck on his line as he hit it that early. Look at those Portugal fans at the far left-hand corner. I don't think there's a single one who isn't dancing up and down at the moment. And there's some trouble. Uh, and the in front of us I can't quite see what's caused it but certainly French fans are looking behind them um, at an incident that's happened about 25 yards from where we sit France nil, Portugal 1 well it was the second period of extra time when they scored against Croatia that had been a thoroughly miserable night wasn't it Danny thoroughly miserable night and it was their first effort on target now France try to find the equaliser header away by Pepe Everett collects it on the far side of the field nine minutes and counting into Griezmann Griezmann slips the ball Everett into the penalty Ever tries to pull it back it takes a deflection and runs kindly uh, to Jean Murillo who hits it away towards the goal scorer Eder on the far side and it's out of play it's going to be a throw into France it's very similar to Germany France isn't it you know France have had all the possession dominated the game but haven't had that Cut an edge in the final third. Marshall to Evra. Evra's cross in. Good catch by Patricio. There is no overestimating the contribution of the Portuguese goalkeeper tonight. Yeah, he's been excellent. He normally punches a lot every cross normally. He's caught everything tonight. Good throw out too to João Murillo, who plays it back to Guerrero. He was so close to putting Portugal in front before Eder's strike. It's played down the left touchline towards João Murillo. Murillo was falling. Uh, Pogba and it's a free kick to France and the French fans need to get up they need to get up they need to respond to the noise being made by the Portugal supporters eight minutes to go here in the start of France this was such an unlikely scoreline here's Sanya back to Pogba 
and Pogba slips as he chipped the ball forward. Patricio should have called uh, to Pepe. Pepe didn't hear a call and no headed it behind. It's a set piece. Set piece. Corner to France. Griezmann to take it. Left footed. Everybody of any height goes forward into the Portuguese penalty area. Here comes Griezmann. Left footed. Drill deep. Uh, header away by Portugal. Portugal can counter attack here. It's Juan Murillo. Charisma to his right. Murillo is aware of him. Charisma gets the ball onto Nani. Nani's onside, but he's forced wide. Nani keeps the ball in play, which is all Portugal need to do at the moment. Taps it back to Juan Murillo. Just outside the penalty area. Nani again. Nani uh, takes on Coleman. Beats Coleman. Then he retreats and plays it back. Good play by the acting captain of Portugal. William Carvalho to Guerrero and back to Font inside the Portugal half it's going to Patricio pressure on Patricio but he's equal to it he just plays the ball onto his left foot and there's the clearance and we've got six and a half minutes to go no foul on Eder despite his complaint to Mark Plattenberg ball runs through to Lloris I mean it was a great shot to beat Lloris I don't think there's any fault attributing to the French captain but here's Marshall. Marshall to Coleman Coleman right in the penalty pulls it back played by William Carvalho headed in field by France but only the Portuguese possession the counter attack again Portugal João Muriel brought down there by yes Pogba Pogba's going to be booked Pogba in despair well that's the eighth yellow card of the game most of them have been justified free kick to Portugal slowing things down Coutinho will finally take it France nil, Portugal won what were the odds in Portugal winning? outsiders, clear outsiders well, any names on it Alan? well here's Nani Nani back to William Carvalho and on to Cedric Suarez on the far side of the field back into his own half now he turns, chipped it forward straight to Mtiti Mtiti brings it away into the centre circle now he plays it towards le his left to Matuidi, Matuidi powerful run forward, approaching the penalty area plays it to Marshall Marshall into the penalty area Marshall going but he forgets to take the ball with him and it's behind for a goal kick good defending now again from Portugal realised that Martial wanted to go down the outside they've just defended very very well very very sensibly, they've nudged people they've got bodies in the way and they've really limited France to shots from outside the box. All the noise is from the Portuguese fans. The French supporters, for the first time in the night, are relatively quiet. And that's not what's required in the final five minutes of extra time. They need to get up for their team. Portugal on the attack. Nani, edge of the penalty, crosses low towards Karezma. Cleared away, importantly, by Sanya. And it runs to Griezmann. Griezmann now. On to Coleman inside the centre circle. Coleman and Zinyak ahead of him, and he tried to find Zinyak. It was an important touch back. I don't think a deliberate pass back to the goalkeeper. Uh, it certainly wasn't interpreted as that. The ball's with Patricio, and uh, the Portuguese player is down, quote, injured, and uh, that will break up play. And they'll bring on Physio. Well, Mark Clattenburg's calling for a stretcher. Stretch, yeah, Guerrero. Uh, just they're, getting cramped. Stretched. they're getting stretched out now France it's hard on the legs when they lose the ball Portugal are playing little passes and breaking on them getting themselves up the field well, they can't a lot of leg work for France they can't afford him to go off because they'll be down to 10 men but he is being lifted onto the stretcher yeah I think Mark Clattenburg's just concerned that they're going to try and time waste as much yeah. as possible he was stretching and then he slipped a little bit awkwardly right <laughs> Ronaldo, we're getting a slow motion replay of Ronaldo pointing to his watch. He's suddenly uh, become the manager, isn't he? Yeah. Maybe one day. He'll still make it about him, don't worry. Yeah, yeah, but a funny feeling that he might limp his way up uh, to raise the trophy. We'll see. Guerrero has to be helped off. Uh, I, I'm not disputing the player is injured, or at least has crap. But he'll have to get back on very quickly once he reaches this touchline on the watch there are three minutes of extra time remaining Portugal lead France 1-0 elements of the game haven't been great the atmosphere has been fabulous 
and the winning strike, if it is a winning strike, has been a goal fit to win a major championship from Adair. Guerrero is off, and no sign that he's coming back on just yet. So Portugal are down to 10 men. France have to score. Portugal try to get the ball away, and they've got a free kick. And that's a relief for the foul on Nani. Guerrero still receiving treatment. And look at Ronaldo. Ronaldo is saying, get back on the pitch. What does he know about it? He's nowhere near the player. So Ronaldo now knows that Guerrero's fully fit. He's running up to Guerrero and saying, get back on the pitch. That's ridiculous. The coach should tell him to sit down and shut up. I'm not sure what the fourth the official's doing either. I don't think anybody tells him to do anything. I think he just does what he wants. Guerrero's back on the pitch. The fourth official just ignored him as he just walked straight through the French technical area. Inside the last two minutes of extra time. There will be time added on now, surely. Pepe takes a free kick, high towards the goal scorer, Eder. Eder jumps, doesn't make contact with the ball, and it runs behind for a goal kick to France. Lloris takes it quickly to Koscielny. 90 seconds remain, there are thereabouts, and Titi for the house. They're not going to win it three times, not at the moment they're not. Portugal are going to win their first major championship. The ball to the Eder on the halfway line. Eder to Nani, great run forward by Karesma. Nani hasn't spotted him, now he has, he plays it through. Karesma's on side. Karesma has the ball, he had to check his run. Brilliant little flick by Karesma. Joao Mario into the penalty area. Well tackled and the ball breaks behind for a corner to Portugal. And that might be that. Well, they're just going to kill time now, aren't they? It'll be a little short corner. France have to try and get the ball back without giving the foul away. Jose Font's been booked for something. Just seen that go up on a big screen, not quite sure what that was for. But Portugal now would just waste as much time in the corner yeah. as possible. Cor corner's taken short. And you can blame them. Machinho, oh, I think that ball's going out of play. It's got to be a throw into France, it is. So they rather squandered that corner kick. Well, it doesn't matter though, throw in there. You know, still 100 yards to go before they get the ball in the back of the net if they can. It's Chester Dye. Coleman then plays it back to him, Titi, on the edge of the French penalty. We will have additional time. The fourth official is coming forward. France have the ball on the far side of the field. Matrini on to Everett. Two minutes of added time. And we're into the additional time. But Portugal have possession. Eder, they can counter-attack here. Eder in no rush forward. Holds on to the ball. Falls over, gets a free kick. Soft free kick. Did really well there, Eder. Just waited, didn't panic, kept hold of the ball, and just drew the foul. Look where Ronaldo is, he's practically on the pitch. Standing beside Fernando Santos. Calm down, he's saying. You should calm down, Cristiano. To be fair, he's won all these trophies at club level. He's never won an international event for his country. His contribution lasted only 25 minutes, arguably, arguably only 16 minutes when he first went down injured. Now Portugal just hit the free kick behind for a goal kick. One minute of the two minutes of added time they've been playing. Is there one last opportunity for France? Portugal head the ball away to the far side of the field. Everett knocks it in field. Koscielny runs forward. And Teddy plays it towards the right side. Header on by Sanya. Coleman has the ball, close to the corner fly, right side for France, and Portugal have got most everybody back, Coleman crosses left footed, deep ball in, header down, chance, ball hits an offender, and has gone behind other flags up for offside, goodness gracious, opportunity, opportunity, wow, that for was the chance wasn't it, that was it, worked it very well, caught on far post, gets a run on it, just can't get it through the bodies, great defending, Offside. But if it had been direct, if it had banged it in on the volley, it would have counted. Oh, yeah, definitely. Portugal are doing to France what Greece did to them 12 years ago. Patricio is yet to take the free kick. When he does, I think we'll get the final whistle. He might get booked first. He is booked. I'm sure he's As not if bothered. he cares. Now he's going to hit the free kick. There it goes. I'm one iron mark Clattenburg whistle to his lips final whistle is blown and Portugal are champions of Europe against all the odds 
Ronaldo makes it, his colleagues make it, and France are devastated, absolutely devastated, beaten by a late goal in the second period of extra time, a blistering finish from Eder, it's finished, France nil, Portugal won.